Ah, that takes me back. Feels like just yesterday. This brings back memories. Feels like just yesterday. That's nostalgic. This brings back memories. This brings back memories. Ah, that takes me back. This brings back memories. Feels like just yesterday. This brings back memories. I remember this.
This brings back memories. I remember this. Feels like just yesterday. Feels like just yesterday. This brings back memories. I remember this. Ah, that takes me back. Ah, that takes me back. That's nostalgic. Feels like just yesterday. Ah, that takes me back. I remember this. Ah, that takes me back. That's nostalgic.
Ah, that takes me back. Ah, that takes me back. That's nostalgic. Ah, that takes me back. Ah, that takes me back. That's nostalgic. I remember this. Ah, that takes me back. This brings back memories. Ah, that takes me back. That's nostalgic. I remember this. This brings back memories.
feels like just yesterday. This brings back memories. Feels like just yesterday. I actually slept well last night. Ah, that takes me back. Feels like just yesterday. Ah, that takes me back. This brings back memories. That's nostalgic. This brings back memories. This brings back memories. Ah, that takes me back. This brings back memories. This brings back memories.
Ah, that takes me back. Feels like just yesterday. Ah, that takes me back. I remember this. Ah, that takes me back. Feels like just yesterday. I remember this. I remember this. Relish this moment. Right. Feels like just yesterday. This brings back memories. Hey, Hamako-san. Well, if it isn't Saiko. How's business? Breaking in the cash, hon? 
My club's doing okay. What about your place? Now, if you're doing okay, then we must be more or less the same. And not much to do during slow hours, you know. Anyway, I see you brought an unfamiliar face with you. I've only recently arrived in town. My name is Taichi Suzuki. <laughs> Come on now. What's with the fake name? Huh? Uh, what fake name? <laughs> Don't play dumb with me. That awkward introduction of yours made it so obvious. Was it really that awkward? Maybe it's better if we just cut the bullshit with her. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. Everyone's already in the know about your alias. Fine, then. I'll play along. Tai Chi Suzuki-san, was it? <laughs> I guess there's no fooling you, Hamako-san. <laughs> Don't take it too hard, sweetheart. Stay in business long enough in this town, and you'll end up just like me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. This is Hamako-san. She's been in Ijincho longer than I have. She's like the underboss of this town. Or, perhaps more aptly, a ghost haunting it. Hmm. So what's the story? You girls dump Ichiban for a new man? Suzuki-san here helped me and Kasuga out of a bind. He's even more notorious than I am in the underground. Careful not to show disrespect, lest you embarrass yourself. Enough of that. Keep up that talk and I'd be the one disrespecting Hamako-san. Oh, looks like we have a real gentleman here. You treat all the ladies this way? And how do you know Ichiban? How should I put this? Uh, the two of us used to work for the same company, although we never met back then. Ichiban really respects Suzuki-san. Oh, right, the two of them were in Hawaii until recently, too. Huh, you guys must be real close if you went on vacation together. All right then, Suzuki-san, why don't you stay a while? Have some tea with me. Just you and me? What? I'm not gonna eat you up or anything. Oh, are you too busy to have one cup of tea with an old hag like me? All right. Let's have that cup of tea. Now we're talking. Head on upstairs. I'll get everything ready. Is this your shop? Sure is. On the outside, we're an eating house. Normally, you'd be serviced by some girls. But if you're looking for that kind of special treatment, come back another time. Of course, I'll have to charge you for that. <laughs> no, I'm fine. We're what society would call a shady business. Remember that politician, Ryo Aoki? A few years back, he came to Ijincho. He made this bold claim that Bleach Japan, the MPO, would build shelters. Said that girls who work in places like this, and their families, could live there free of charge and get job training. Sounded like a brilliant idea. Now that's real philanthropy, I thought. He even told me I could be the dorm mother. So I was near ready to sell this place off. Why is this place still standing? Because that shelter was a bald-faced lie. Ryo Aoki's true objective was to gain popularity and gather votes by wiping out the Grey Zones and everyone in it. I made my girls go to a shelter, but it ended up being a mousetrap. <laughs> Lion's Lair, actually. Now they were all arrested and deported. The ones working here now are all new. The kind of girls who come work for me don't even have family back home. That's why they stay here in the Jean Show. I was duped all because I was careless. Now I have no idea how any of those poor souls are doing. I see. Sorry to hear it. But it sounds like you had no way of knowing that happened. But the thing is, I should have known. Ichiban and them saw right through Rio Aoki. They even had their suspicions about the shelter. Now they tried to warn me. But I still went and got myself fooled. I even yelled at Ichiban, telling him not to doubt Aoki's good intentions. 
You're not the one at fault, huh, Uncle-san? It's Rio Alki. I know that, sure. But... Never got to apologize to Ichiban for yelling at him. <laughs> now it's been years since, so I completely botched the timing. And knowing him, he might not even remember that one minor detail. So I wondered, maybe I don't need to apologize. I never stopped wondering since. Is that why you decided to confide in me? So I could be your messenger? Come on. I'm not that shameless. Nah, I just... I just wanted someone to hear me out, I guess. But there's no way I could tell Namba or Saiko. Nah, I don't need them seeing me weak and vulnerable. And you thought I'd be a good confidant? Well, Ichiban respects you, doesn't he? And you were with him until recently. Anyway, did you say anything about me while you two were off in Hawaii? I think he might have told me he's over it now, or something. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Nah, I take it he never mentioned me, did he? And again, why would he? I didn't even know Ichiban was overseas. I highly doubt he holds it against you. He's not the kind of guy who'd bear a grudge. Sorry for taking up your time on my petty little issues. I feel bad. Don't worry about it. We all have those nagging doubts in our heads. You're not alone on that. Even if you want to forget, you can't. Because you never got the closure you needed. Closure? Hmm. <laughs> When you get to be my age, you're always gonna have unfinished business. Right, I feel the same way. But recently, some things came up in my life that got me thinking. Tying up all those loose ends made me realize that. No one can live life without having a single regret. That's impossible. But you can take matters into your own hands and try to make the best of what life dealt you. So you're saying I ought to apologize to Ichiban? Well, what if he says, I don't remember anything like that and laughs in my face for bringing it up now? If he finds out that it's been eating at you for a long time, there's no way he'd laugh. That's just how he is. <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> I think I get why you've got Saiko and Sun He waiting on you hand and foot. They're doing what? Did you really have to put it that way? <laughs> well, at any rate, I do feel better after talking to you, Suzuki-san. Now I'm actually looking forward to the next time I see Ichiban. That's so. <laughs> Glad to hear. Also, the tea was delicious. I should get going now. And don't tell Psycho or anyone about this, you hear? After all, I'm supposed to be some hardened old ghost. I can't have them think I've gone soft. Don't worry. I can keep a secret. Thanks for the tea. And take care. Taichi Suzuki, was it? <laughs> Whoever he was, he must be a great man. Yes, well done. You're all doing an excellent job carrying out Shurei Bibi. Can you feel yourself accumulating even more Kulipas? Just hang in there for a little longer. Now, do you understand? This is true Shurei Bibi. Then, with hearts full of naught but gratitude, let us all utter a prayer of thanks. Heptonost.
To those of you watching at home, I am Munon Suzuki, and I once took the world by storm. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to tell your friends and family about me. Yes? Did you need something? Apologies, but I'm currently in the middle of recording. Fine then. I won't beat around the bush. Are you THE Munan Suzuki? Oh! You know who I am? Oh well, that pleases me greatly! But yes, indeed. I am the one and only Munan Suzuki himself. Would you care to join us in practicing Shurei Pipi? What's your angle here? Are you trying to spread the teachings of Munan Shoheb Donast again? Pardon me, but might I ask who you are? Were you a victim of the Order's scheme, or...? No, not exactly. Well, if you're here to make a mockery of me, then please excuse me. As I've said earlier, we are in the middle of recording. So you're finding folks online to convert? I heard you were done with that sort of thing. <laughs> Seems you know quite a bit about me. But I'm afraid you have the wrong idea. This isn't about proselytizing. Really now? You say that, but what you're doing here looks pretty suspect to me. I can't stand back and watch if more people are being conned into joining a cult. Well, I'm used to people calling me a sham. I certainly don't blame you for not looking the other way. But rest assured, I no longer pose the same threat you assume I do. Hey, Moonon! What's the holdup? Teach us more about Shure Pipi. Moonon! Over here! Am I getting more Kulipas? <laughs> Shure Pipi! Shure Pipi! See those people? They are merely looky-loos who came to observe a viral internet sensation and not true believers of Munan Chohept Onast. They have only gathered here today because they find me a funny man, not because they worship me as a guru. Then what's the point of these videos? Well, you see. Oh, found it. The batshit guru of the bullshit religion. What, you think you'll trend? Hmm? No, what now? <laughs> I thought they put you in the slammer for fraud. Shit, man, don't tell me you're brainwashing little kids now. You guys don't have a damn clue, do you? Not a single damn clue about how many lives this phony ruined in the past. Oh, um, I don't know anything about that. Sorry, I'm just gonna get going now. Hey, you know these guys? I don't, no. But I get harassed by people like them fairly often. Anyone and everyone can watch my videos after all. They must be aware of my past transgressions, and as such, in their minds, they are the ones exacting justice. The Order of Moon on Shoheptonast, was it? The hell are you thinking spreading videos of this shit? Your anger is not misplaced. But please understand, this is how I intend to atone for my sins. So, good sirs, would you kindly leave me be? I assure you I shall neither disturb the public nor stir up unrest. If you didn't want to kick up trouble, then shitty influencers like you shouldn't even exist in the first place! So you want to atone, do you? And how about you go kill yourself? Go jump in front of a train. <laughs> yeah, the ocean's close too. At least you make yourself useful and feed the fishes. You're saying you usually have to deal with this? Then why upload these videos? You're only attracting more attention. Hey, stay out of this, pal. We ain't through with him, not yet. So hurry up and get lost already. You see, 
The point of my videos is to explain the methods that I myself have once employed as the leader of a cult. And I hope that by uploading them online, they'd be of aid to someone. What do you mean? The Shure PP practice just now is an example of exerting pressure. When faced with a group performing the same action, an individual will feel forced to conform. Shure PP takes away an individual's ability to think for themselves, and how well they perform is reflected as points we call Kulipas. By doing so, we can rank the devotees and tell them that the only way to accumulate more Kulipas is by offering Ringchos. In other words, paying titherants, tithes. That's how a cult rakes in large sums of donations. If I can spread the word about these practices, then new and emerging cults won't be able to prey on innocent people. Some viewers have even commented on my videos, saying they helped them see through a scam. Bullshit! You're just an ex-convict bragging about your crimes for the views. You think we'd let that slide? I make practically nothing from my videos, and what meager amount I do earn, I donate to a support group for the victims. There is no end to my atonement. I see. So that's what you've been doing. Seriously, old man? Talk about gullible. This guy's a con. No doubt he's making this shit up as he goes, dumbass. He's a threat to society. It's only right we make an example out of him. I trust Munan Suzuki's word. Excuse me for being gullible. Damn it! Let go of me, asshole! Return this man's tripod and apologize. If you want to rave about justice, then at least keep your own manners in check. Cult Guru strikes again. Took no time at all for him to brainwash another sucker. I don't get how people flock to you. You sick fucks give me the creeps! Let's beat him down! Allow me. Ready for the knockout? Let's finish this! Let's do it. Something Try wrong? to watch this! Oh. Yeah. 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 Getting that in the end. Doing better than I thought. Excuse me, but would you happen to be Kiryu-san? We first met in Onomichi, correct? Where we dismantled the cult together, you and I. You've changed quite a bit since then. I apologize for not recognizing you right away. Sorry, but you got the wrong guy. My name's not Kiryu. What? It's not? That's... A little strange. What is? When I said I was atoning for my past sins, you believed me even though you had no reason to. You could have told me I was just all talk, considering the fact that I did time for fraud. But if you were Kiryu-san, then it makes sense why you'd trust my word. When you helped me bring down the cult in Hiroshima, you gave me the push I needed to walk the straight and narrow. I've only gotten this far thanks to you. Do you happen to remember, Kiryu-san? What you said before we went our separate ways? Again, I'm sorry, Munan Suzuki-san. You've got the wrong guy. I should go now. Wait, please, Kiryu-san! It is you, isn't it? For us to have met here of all places, it must have been divine intervention. How do I appear to you now? Do you believe I truly am atoning for my sins? If there really is a divine being out there, I'm sure he'd be lenient on a guy who faces his sins head on. <laughs> so it really is you, Kiryu-san. That's the exact same thing you said the last time we parted ways. Sorry, Munan Suzuki. 
This is all I can do for you right now. Good luck. Really? Pocket Circuit Stadium. Kamurocho actually has one again. Ah, Pocket Circuit. <laughs> Those little radio-controlled race cars. It's a surprisingly deep hobby, competing against others on elaborate racetracks. There was a time I was the fastest Pocket Circuit racer in Kamurocho, taking on all comers. I got to know the kids who frequented the place through racing and modding our cars together. And <laughs> I even formed a lasting friendship with a pocket circuit fighter that managed our location. Last time I saw him was in Onomichi. Hope he's doing all right. Stop being so annoying. Let me play how I want, fighter. Hmm? But that customization you put together won't work, Kojiro-kun. Try these tires instead. They'll give you more friction on turns. Come on, use them just once, buddy. For me? Knock it off! The tires I have are the best. They're purple. Purple's cool, but the color doesn't make it race better. Don't you want to stay on the track? No, shut up already! Fighter, you suck! Let's go find something to do at the park. Yeah, this is dumb, Yasukun. Mm. Aw, just give it a little more time. It's fun. Not again. Jeez, I can't get these kids to listen. Oh well, better clean up. Whoa! Ooh, sorry about that. Huh. A golem tiger. Oh? You... Uh... You recognize it? Hmm. I used to race here, actually. Back with the first pocket circuit fighter. Whoa. So, my name's Muranaka. I'm a new fighter, employed by the pocket circuit company themselves. I'm... Well, as far as Pocket Circuit goes, I'm Kazuma. Kazuma-kun, huh? Pleasure to meet you. So if you knew this branch's first fighter, you must go back a while. I started in the bubble era. Must have been 30 years ago now. Whoa, that would have been the first boom period. Amazing. I'd have loved to have been there to see it. Is it true how popular it was back then? I'd say so. From what I recall, it really swept the country for a time. Then one day, the Kamurocho Stadium was gone. <laughs> I'm surprised to see it come back now. Ah, oh, yeah, it, it did die down for a while, but recently there's been a surge of interest. The market's swelling again. On top of that, we have a new company president. He's a pocket circuit fanatic, apparently. I'm oh, super into it. He came up with a bunch of innovative new mixed media strategies to get younger school kids back into RC racing. Hmm, that sounds effective. So, what made you want to be a pocket circuit fighter? Everything else aside? The cars. Pocket circuit cars fascinate me. Pocket circuit's popularity was waning by the time I got into it, but I didn't care. I'd spend every afternoon customizing my rig. 
All of my meager allowance went toward building the best machine I could. I didn't have friends at school, but eventually, I met people through Pocket Circuit. It was like finding my place in the world. It was so much fun in those days. I get it. That made you want to become a fighter. Yup. It was the fighter at my local branch who approached me when he saw that I would race alone. He helped bring me together with the other kids. I finally made friends. All thanks to him. That's the person I want to be. Someone who can help cheer up kids up when they're going through hard times. That's a true pocket circuit fighter. I think that's the right idea. You're a good fit. Except, this job's a lot harder than I thought it'd be. When it comes to pocket circuit tech, nobody knows more than me. And I just... want to pass on that knowledge. Teach kids the best customizations. Support their curiosity. But when I try, oh, I can't get through to them. The kids all seem to hate me. Maybe I'm just not cut out to be a fighter. Now that I'm 30, it might be time to move back home. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? <laughs> no. It's just that back in my day, the fighter here was in a very similar position. He and I raced together a lot. I have nothing but good memories of him. It's been a long time, but I still consider him a close friend. You really have that kind of bond? Hmm. He was a great spokesperson for the hobby, and good with kids. Still, he had his share of troubles. The company never saw him as more than a disposable part-timer. When he had 30, he had a hard time staying with it. Wow. What did he do? He decided to remain a fighter. He loved Pocket Circuit. The kids loved him. In the end, he couldn't turn away from that love. The kids loved him, huh? <sighs> Makes me jealous. If I only had a better relationship with them, I wouldn't be so conflicted. Let me ask, what do you imagine the kids there want from you? Me? Well, I'm the pocket circuit fighter. They want me to teach them the best way to race, don't they? That's an important part of it. The fighter should be someone you can consult on builds. However, do you really think that's what children are looking for? Huh? You told me about the fighter who helped you as a kid, but you didn't mention his technical expertise. Did you decide to become a fighter because he made you a faster car? Did you idolize him because he taught you which tire set takes sharp turns better? Of course not. He meant the world to me because... when I had nobody... he rescued me from my loneliness. I think you understand now. What is it the children want from their fighter? You know the answer, don't you? Kazuma-kun. You're right. This whole time, I've been mistaken. Pocket Circuit might be a technical hobby, but that's not its heart. It can't be only about winning and losing. First and foremost, it's about having fun with your fellow racers. I can't believe I looked past something so obvious. <sighs> No wonder the kids hate me. It's not too late, you know. Right. I'm gonna find those kids. This time, I won't talk about wheels. I'll talk about feels. Pocket Circuit runs on love. Good. I'm sure they'll take to that lesson. Oh, thanks so much, Kazuma-kun. Fighter away! Yo, sick cart, short stuff. Is this limited edition? Yeah, I want one too. Hey, give it back, please. Huh? Don't be such a greedy brat. Well, you want to get hit? A premium model's wasted on some dumbass kids. I'll make this thing fly. But I spent my whole allowance on it. I don't care. Go away before I kill you. Don't move a muscle. You scum! Huh? Is that the nerd I think it is? Nerd? No! Try Pocket Circuit Fighter! 
And that's Kojiro-kun's car. Hand it over. <laughs> Shit! Pocket jerk-off fighters actually lecturing me. Why don't you crawl back into whatever boomer-ass manga they cribbed your outfit from? You know we'd put a car like that to better use than some moron toddlers. Don't you want faster races at your rinky-dink stadium? Are you nuts? As if I'd let anyone who mistreats kids race on my tracks. Pocket Circuit may be competitive, but it's not the fastest who wins the day. It's whoever has the most fun. You two blockheads don't deserve Pocket Circuit. Fighter. It's not safe here. Move along, please. But Fighter. Don't worry about me. Now go. Okay. Now, just you and me. Right. Listen up. You're dealing with the pocket circuit fighter now. Ugh! Ugh, cheap shot. So, that's how it is. <laughs> hey, this nerd's literally as weak as he looks. <laughs> Look at you in that oversized chip bag. This fighter can suck my ass. For real. What kind of virgin devotes his whole life to toy cars? Have your folks seen your dumb cosplay? <laughs> Go home! If your family ain't disowned you yet, maybe they can find you a real job, fighter! Kojiro-kun's car... handed... over! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Damn it! Uh, my race isn't run... Yet. <laughs> He's actually out cold. Let's teabag him. Hey. Huh? Ah! The, the hell? Who are you? Nobody besides a pocket circuit fan. You've both made a big mistake just now. Now be quiet and give me the card. What's up with him? You got some death wish, old man? Should we find out? Hell yeah, we should! Let's fuck this guy up! Cool, guys, I think I'll enjoy this. Here we go. Ready for the knockout? Let's finish this! Yes. Yes. <sighs> that should do it. Hmm? Uh, is that you, Kojiro-kun? Yes, it's me. Are you okay? Fighter! Yeah, I'll be all right. Are any of you hurt? Uh-uh. All because you protected us. Thanks so much. Fighter, you're so strong. We never knew. Huh? What? Me? Well, look. Those bullies are all knocked out. Oh, was that me? There's nobody else around. You're the coolest fighter. Um, I'm really happy you got my car back. Don't worry about it. It's a fighter's job to keep the racers safe. Fighter, you, you did all of this for us. After I said such mean stuff to you. I swear, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I promise, Kojiro-kun. I'm the one who's sorry. You only wanted to have fun customizing your kit. I tried to force my way of doing things onto you, but you never asked me to. I assumed you'd be happier if you won more often, but you were smart enough to know what matters to you. I was a crummy fighter. I forgot the most important thing about Pocket Circuit. Please, forgive me. Fighter! Hey, I know how to make it all okay. Let's race together. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Take us back to the stadium, Fighter. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. Um, I might need to buy a couple bandages first. Can you two go on ahead? Sure, <laughs> we'll wait for you there. Well done, fighter. You've really earned that title. 
Murunaka-kun. Hmm? Uh, President. Huh. No way. Of course. Fighter said the new president was a fanatic. I got a call on my pocket phone that a fighter was in a scuffle and rushed over. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. I'm just fine, sir. And no harm came to the children. I see. Well, thank goodness. You did the right thing protecting them, Murunaka-kun. <laughs> Any fighter worth their stripes would do the same. Murunaka-kun, something's different about you. Have you found some new motivation? Do you think so? Kazuma-kun's to thank, then, probably. Kazuma-kun? Yes, sir. He's a truly noble man and a racer since the bubble era. I was beginning to doubt my value as a fighter. To be honest, Kazuma-kun heard me out and gave me advice fit for a sage. He opened my eyes, sir. How about that? Kazuma-kun. You say he helped you through a personal crisis? Yes, absolutely. May I ask, uh, it sounds like you might know him, sir? Hmm. He happens to be an, uh, an important old friend. Oh, I should have realized. Kazuma couldn't mention knowing the first fighter. He called you a friend, too. He did, did he? If it's all right, sir, I should get back to the stadium. The kids are waiting for me. Hmm. And take care of yourself. Oh, Murunaka-kun. If you happen to see Kazuma-kun again, give him a message. I would love another race someday, friend. You got it, sir. I won't forget. See you again, Mr. President. You called me your friend, huh? Pocket Circuit sure is special, Kazuma-kun. If we, uh, if I ever see you again, let's laugh together. Let's cry, let's shout. Just like the kids do. Like we used to back then. Let's race, Kazuma-kun. Hold on. Don't move. No! Stop! Don't call an ambulance! I can't afford it. This isn't the time for that. You could die. Even if I survived this, I'd just be assumed dead if those thieving debt collectors come after me. Damn it. Then what should I do? If he's refusing an ambulance, how can I help him? Should I look for a hospital nearby? But what are the chances of finding a hospital in the heart of Kamurocho? Hmm. Wait a minute. Aren't we right near... That's right. Emoto Medical Clinic. Home to Kamurocho's best physician. Who treat this guy for free? It's been ages since we first met. Wouldn't matter if all of society turned its back on you. Doc Emoto doesn't refuse anyone in need. I respect the man. Good to know he's still kicking. Hang in there, all right? I'm gonna get you to a doctor. Doc. Sorry to barge in. It's an emergency. Huh? Where is Dr. Emoto? 
I'm Dr. Emoto, but if you're looking for my father, he's out currently. I'm sure he'll be back soon. Then you must be. But didn't you just say there's an emergency? Oh, let's not waste time chatting. What's the situation? Can patient move on his own? A homeless man collapsed. He's having some sort of attack. He's on the street right now and won't take an ambulance. Understood. This kind of thing is fairly typical. My apologies, but I'll need your help carrying him in. Is he all right now? <sighs> yes, he's fine. He's actually one of my father's patients. This tends to happen from time to time. Though, this time around, it was your intervention that ended up saving him. Oh, that's a relief. So how is the old doctor these days? Well, the years have taken their toll. In fact, that's more noticeable lately. Were you a patient of my father's? No, I'm not exactly. Huh? What's going on here? He injured? He collapsed after having another attack. Seems he ran out of the meds you prescribed. That gentleman over there made me aware of the situation, so we were able to prevent a disaster. Ah, oh, I see. Thank you. And I'm sure he'd like to personally extend his thanks when he comes to. No, there's no need for that. I've got to head out soon. Earlier, it sounded as though you knew my father personally. Well... I've heard a few things here and there, but it was quite a while ago. Hmm, did you hear good things or bad things? All good things. <laughs> well, I suppose I should thank my lucky stars. So, you run this clinic with your daughter now? Hell no. This is my clinic. She's just a busybody who barges in whenever she feels like it. Taken after me was 100% her idea. True, I was never asked, but someone has to keep this place running, no matter what my dad says. I've told him he can retire anytime, but he absolutely refuses to settle down. Uh, what's wrong? Uh, no, no, my, my apologies. Uh, for a second, I mistook you for someone I knew way back when. Come to think of it, I heard he died a few years ago. He was a legend among the Yakuza here in Kamrocho. You don't say. Huh. <laughs> that voice. You even sound just like him. But I guess that's downright impossible. To think, I almost accused a friend of faking his own death all those years ago. Preposterous. Yeah, unfortunately you've got the wrong guy. I'm just passing through. Right. But I did haunt Kamurocho often in the past. I've heard a lot about you. In a town that only cares about money and women. There's a doctor who'll help anybody in need. A man of great character. Ha. <laughs> well, that's pretty exaggerated. But it's nice to know that I'm a trusted physician. What's with this heavy atmosphere? You two can just tell me if I'm in the way. Oh, that's not it. I'm going on break. You guys, take your time. It must be reassuring to know you have a reliable successor. She grew up following in your footsteps. One look at her, and you can tell how strong-willed she is. Isn't that the truth? Once my daughter makes up her mind, it's her way or the highway. Huh. But that's the right attitude to have when running a clinic like this. And patients seem to prefer being treated by her rather than an old grouch like me. <laughs> These days, all anyone ever seems to ask me is when I'm going to retire. That's a shame. Damn straight. It only gets me even more fired up. At this rate, I'll be a doctor until my dying day. <laughs> Those ungrateful patients can't get rid of me yet. 
It was good to see you, Dakimoto. As someone who treats the injured and infirm, I can't exactly ask you to come again soon. But I'm here for you. Even if you're guarding secrets, you can trust me. Doctor-patient confidentiality, you know. <laughs> Thanks. I might just take you up on that offer. Times have changed, and even the Tojo clan is long gone. But some things never change. <laughs> Looks like I'm still no match for you, Dakimoto. The Champion District, huh? Thinking back on it, old man Komaki used to train me here and over in West Park. West Park's been gone ever since Kamurocho Hills went up, but this place hasn't changed a bit. I swear, from kicking you while you're down to unfair matchups, even full on shotgun blasts, Komaki knew how to dish it out. His methods might have been a little unorthodox, sure, but I also learned a lot from him. It was pretty aged last time we met, too. I hope he's still doing okay. Yo! The hell you think you're doing here, Gramps? Yeah, bro, this is our territory. What, you deaf or something, huh? No, actually, I didn't. And I'm pretty sure no one else did, either. The hell'd you say? All right, fine then. It's beatdown time. Oh boy. You're dead meat, old timer. Sorry about it. Now hang on. I'm a nice enough guy. Tell you what, you leave your cash with us, and we'll let you go. Sound fair? Meat What a guy. I don't have time for this. Hold it! You fucking with us? And after I was all generous and shit? And shit is a good way to describe it. Man, shut up! Alright, fine! Guess we'll just kill you then! Well, let's get started. Allow me. Nothing personal. Let's finish this! Learn <laughs> more every day. Moving up. Woo! <laughs> that mouth of yours is trouble. Better learn to shut it, or the next guy might not be so nice. We're so sorry! <laughs> well, aren't you a sight? No doubt you fought your share of battles. Hmm? Huh? Wait, now, are you? Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Forgive me, but have we met? Hmm. I see. Live long enough, and you're bound to have a secret or two. <laughs> Sorry, it seems I was mistaken. <laughs> Just, well, you look very similar to an old pupil of mine. But that was long ago, of course. Hmm, is that right? The name's Sotaro Komaki, master of the Komaki school. I teach martial arts here in town, and have for quite some time. So, you new here? <laughs> Come out this way on a trip or something? Oh, no, just here running an errand. I'll be leaving soon. Ah. Then, while I have you, any interest in becoming my pupil? Fair chance you'll improve your skills 100 times over. <laughs> you know, had you asked me when I was younger, I might have taken you up on that. 
Unfortunately, I've got other things on my plate right now. Sorry. Sure. Can't argue there. Well then, at least give ear to the ramblings of an old man. <laughs> For years now, I've taught martial arts to anyone willing. From ambitious youth to aimless drifter. Among them was a strong, kind man with a fist to match even mine. And though he never spoke of them, his scars are selfless ones. Intriguing as he was, I considered him my number one pupil. He even went on to influence my other students as well. Perhaps it was what you might call charisma. Of all those who came and went, he was the only one who had it. Now then, much to my dismay, my pupils tell me he's already passed away. Nevertheless, I sometimes dream of giving lessons to him once more, just as I had in West Park with all the homeless. Listen, truth is, I don't have much time left. So can I ask you a favor? There's something I'd like to do before I die. And what's that? I'd like to round things off. One final fight, a duel for the ages. Who better than my number one pupil? Oh, uh, uh, forgive me, a man that looks <laughs> like him, I mean. So how about it? Help an old man out? I can do that. I may not be your pupil, but I'll give it my all. <laughs> well then, I hope you don't mind if I do the same. In the name of true strength, Sotaro Komaki answers the call! Sotaro Komaki shall not Show me what you down. Here we go. Ready for the knockout? Let's finish this! <laughs> you are but a fledgling. Allow me. Such a pitiful display. Here we go. Allow me. Nothing personal. Here we go. Ready for the knockout? Pretty bold of you. <laughs> Doing better than I thought. How was that, old man? My, you are something. Really, you don't have much time? You're way tougher than anyone else out here. <laughs> it's been a good while since I got to go all out. No other pupil of mine's ever had what it takes. Anyhow, it seems I've nothing left to teach you. Maybe you're still mistaken, but can I tell you something? What's that? A while back, I did in fact do martial arts training, and from someone just like you. Whenever he found someone looking to get stronger, he'd always take them under his wing. This training was unique, to say the least, but his passion was unmatched. He taught me it's not just one's strength, but their will. I'm sure he's still out there holding on to those beliefs, raising others just like he raised me. Beliefs, hmm? Well, I'm sure he'd be very proud of his former student. He'd see a determination to lay it all out on the line for others, and the kindness needed to protect them. He'd say, you haven't changed a bit. But remember, those things can always be used against you. Careful, 
you don't let your guard down. Anyhow, with that, I think I've said all I need. I'll keep it in mind. Anyway, take care, all right? I'm glad we got to meet. Thanks again, old man. Sure. <laughs> Farewell, then. Stranger, as long as these old bones hold, I'll continue devoting myself to my pupils. Perhaps someday we'll fight again, should our paths cross. Until then, keep on keeping on, hmm? <laughs> Likewise. I guess the Komaki school's got a lot of students these days. No doubt they're all learning the same lessons I did. I learned a lot from old man Komaki, and not just techniques. <laughs> In fact, I'm still learning from him every day. Keep on keeping on, old man. There he is. Took you long enough. Much obliged. We've got it from here. Going over to that table. Very good, sir. Please enjoy yourselves. Uh, well, what are we doing here exactly? I appreciate you coming down here, Kiryu. You won't regret it, I think. I'll trust you on that. Whose table was that just now, by the way? Do you two know each other? You were drinking together. Uh, I'd introduce you to the guy, but the Daidoji faction wouldn't be happy with me. Hmm? What's that supposed to mean? Kid's name is Taichi. The boy you raised at Morning Glory? That Taichi. What? Don't start gawking at him. He hasn't clocked you either, it would seem. Don't order another yet. I need a second. Any more and I'll pass out on my way home. It's all right, handsome. I'll watch over you until the morning. Oh, really? You do that? It's not an offer I'd make to just anyone, Tai-chan. But I feel safe with you. <sighs> That's really great. Yokohama girls are the best. To be fair, he's of legal drinking age. Back in Okinawa, he works as a fireman. I can't believe it. That's Taichi. What's he doing here? I heard he was visiting a friend in Tokyo, so I rang him up. I offered to take him around Yokohama. Not like I was ever that close to the boy. Couldn't think of any better place to go than here. <laughs> Jinsho women sure can work wonders on men like him. <laughs> Doubt he even noticed I left. What's the meaning of all this, Date-san? He's supposed to think I'm dead. Why would you invite me somewhere he could spot me? Because if he doesn't realize who he's looking at, there's no problem. Hmm? That's why you and I are keeping our distance. Much as I'd like it, I know you can't speak directly. I still thought seeing him like this would be better than never seeing him at all. <sighs> Date-san. <laughs> You've always been too stubborn to look backward. Tell me, how does it feel? Would dying have been easier without this memory? Don't your kids warrant a spot on your list? I I'd heard about him becoming a firefighter, you know. I, I still keep tabs on all of them, but... I never planned on seeing them again. I couldn't even risk hoping to. Hmm. That's why we're here. 
This is my unfinished business. You've gone through life telling yourself you have no regrets. It's not true. You just refuse to acknowledge them. And if there's anyone still breathing in this world who could convince you of that, I suppose it's me. Dante-san. <sighs> I know. When the Daidoji helped you fabricate your death, I went along with it. And it cost you everything. Haruka, Haruto. A life cut off from the people you love. I replay those events over and over in my head, wondering if I could have changed the outcome. It was my responsibility. My death was the only thing that could have ensured their safety. Dante-san, you have nothing to blame yourself for. Either way, that was a long time ago. Maybe now I could make a difference? Maybe? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Who are they? Oh, I'm not sure, actually. Hey, why are all the girls hanging out here? Send some to our table. Very sorry, sir. We'll address this at once. You'd better. We're paying customers too, ain't we? <laughs> I apologize, everyone. I didn't know I'd be so popular in here. That's because Taichan is the cutest. I won't drink with anyone else. You mean it? Piss off, you dumb fucking tourist. You really think you're hot shit? Damn it. I might have tipped those girls too well. I wanted Tai Chi to have a good time, you know. This is dangerous. Everyone's too drunk. Hey, you're being very impolite, aren't you? Calm down and someone will join you soon. Excuse me? I don't take lip from working girls. <gasps> whoa, whoa, what the hell? You can't do that. Never hit a woman. Hey, don't be a fool. As long as Tai Chi's there, you can't intervene. <sighs> All night's ruined now. I'm gonna discipline this chick. No! Huh? That's enough. You make me sick. The hell? Daichan! You, you're dead, punk! You wanna discipline her, huh? Learn some discipline yourself. Huh. Well, I'll be. Who would have thought Tai Chi had it in? He's full of surprises. Not so fucking fast! Ugh. Hey, shit dick! Nobody likes a guy who hogs the tits! Ah, oh, Tai are you okay? Please get up, please! <sighs> Excuse me, that's quite enough. Leave it once or I'll call the police. Shut your mouth! This is your fault, scumbag! This ends right now. Or I'll pay you back for Taichi ten times over. Uh, uh, Uncle... Is it really you, Uncle Koss? Uncle... Hands off of me! Everybody has a death wish tonight. Whole world's been shitting on me! Now, I'm gonna shit on all of you! Let's beat him down! Here we go. Ready for the knockout. Let's finish this! Yeah. One more every... Oh, all the damn luck. It wasn't supposed to go like this. Will it be all right? Oh, um, well, sleeping like a baby. He's more drunk than he is hurt. Maybe we overdid it a little. <laughs> He's fine. Sir? He's gonna make a great firefighter. Boy's in good shape. Hell, he's a grown man. <sighs> Taichi's going to wake up before too long. You should leave. We'll catch up. I'll stay behind and try to clean up this mess. Thanks. Uncle Koz! Hey, rise and shine, kid. 
What a night. Oh, um, I'm real sorry. I, uh, I remember there was a fight. Somebody came and defended me. Somebody? <laughs> you mean was Kiryu here? Huh? Joking. You were calling out for him, Tai Chi. Uncle Kaz, Uncle Kaz, you said. Uh, really? Weird. I guess I was dreaming. The good news is you held your own, protecting that girl of yours. Huh. Not every man is the sort who'd do that, you know. Even if they wanted to. Actually, that's my trick when I need to be brave. I think about what Uncle Kiryu would do. When I remember the way he was, it's like... I can shut down any fear inside me. You don't say. That's a pretty clever technique. Should give it a try myself. Yeah, sure. It always works for me. This place good? Kanagawa PD contact recommended it to me. Order one drink, sit as long as you like. From now on, consider this my Eugene Show hideout. Hmm. So you mean... Think I'll stay around town for a bit. You know, stay on top of that bucket list of yours. Taiji's little night out was only the start of it. I've got calls going out all over Yokohama. Stop. You realize that if the Daidoji faction catches on, we'll both pay. <laughs> they haven't objected yet, have they? Not even Taichi knows you're still out there. Trust me, the fearsome Daidoji faction has nothing to worry about. You're testing them. Look, I realize I'm taking a risk here. But when it comes to your final days, I don't care. Nothing you say is gonna stop me. If Daidoji has a problem, they know where I am. <laughs> so then, Tai Chi stir anything in you? Do you regret what happened tonight? Because I saw your face just before you left. The way you looked at that proud young man. You have ties to this world. They don't disappear when you turn your back. <laughs> You're not wrong. Dragons don't have the luxury of dying forgotten. Tai Chi remembers you. People remember you. Kazumo Kiryu never walked the easiest path, but the steps he took always bore fruit. You have the responsibility to reap the harvest you've sown. I've never been more certain. I'll call you again. Kasuga and all that is important, but take some time for yourself, too. Date-san. Thank you. I don't have the words. I'll never forget what you're doing for me. Taichi and the others. I thought maybe I'd been able to let go. That even if I never saw them again, I'd be fine. But... When I heard his voice with my own ears... When he was right there in front of me... Who knew I'd be so happy? I certainly didn't. That's more than you need to say. Now, I've got quite some work to do.
違う So, let's catch up. For the record, Taichi's safely back in Okinawa by now. So I'm off at the airport personally. <laughs> Bought him enough tchotchkes to fill a duffel bag. That cabaret fight shouldn't sour his memories of the city. Good. Taichi's lucky to have you looking out. Thank you, Date-san. Hang on. Too early to start thanking me. We need to talk about what's next. Hmm? Come on. Taichi's far from the only one you've shut out. You've been dead to the world how many years? That's what I'm supposed to be. Dead men don't keep in touch. The Daidoji faction made that clear. They only back me as long as I stick to the shadows. Then what happens now? There's video evidence of Kazuma Kiryu still walking the earth. Force majeure, as the French call it, out of our hands. Daidoji say anything about that yet? No, nothing so far. As I thought, they're not omnipotent anyway. Not half as much as they were. What are you trying to say, Date-san? Only that, the way I see it, the Daidoji faction has reason to loosen your leash a bit. If circumstances align for a near miss or two with old friends, they'll likely be too occupied to care. Maybe. But you're forgetting. I keep my promises, whether I'm forced to or not. Oh, I'm well aware. But seeing Tai Chi didn't make you break your word, did it? You keep your distance, they never know you're there. I'm sure the Daidoji won't raise a stink. And if I were one of them, I'd be none too happy. Bloody hell. Does that backbone of yours ever bend? How about this, then? You know what Kamarucho's like these days. With the Tojo and Omi put to pasture, the Yakuza are just a memory. Petty criminals filled that gap. Better or worse, they're too insignificant to pin down. Cops have nothing to hold on to with them. I get it. So what? Some Kamarocho folk think it's worse than ever. Reminds me, Akiyama's gone quiet lately. Hmm? Akiyama? Can't find him? Date-san, when was the last time you two spoke? Just after the dissolution, I suppose. He caught when Kazuma Kiryu might have had a hand in it. Akiyama went hunting for anything he could find, but came back with nothing more than rumors. He rang me up late one night during his investigations. I've tried calling him since, but there's never an answer. He might have finally left town. What? So he just disappeared? 
Do you even know if he's alive? The thought occurred to me, so I've kept a watch going. If he shows up, the police will know. Are you worried? He's just one of plenty you've turned your back to, after all. I'm concerned now that I know he's missing. Akiyama's a special case, however. Maybe so. I'd venture to say, as he goes, so too goes the city. We both know, regardless of all that, Akiyama's not your only concern. <laughs> Tell me what you want from me, Date-san. I thought I'd been clear. This whole bucket kick list of yours is an opportunity. You and the Daidoji can stay honest with each other while we get you some closure on things. Leave everything to me. Akiyama, too. I'll dig him up somehow. Date-san. Who else out there do you need to see? Think. Kamurocho's got a lot of faces. You spent practically half your life on those streets. The people who meant the most to me are dead. Kazuma-san, Yumi, even Nishiki. I still visit their graves. In fact, I was just there recently. To say I'll be with them soon. God's sake. All right, let's focus on the ones who are still above ground. Because, like it or not, that includes you, for now. So who else, hmm? How's that daughter of yours doing? Huh? Saya? Oh, she's fine. She's married now. Three kids. She's... A... Doesn't that mean you're a grandfather? <laughs> I don't believe it. You never thought to tell me? Because that's not what we're here to talk about, damn it. All right. Quit trying to distract me, would you? Take your time if you have to. Think of Kamarocho, okay? I know there's someone there. Hmm. Kamurocho locals that I knew. Well, I guess there's Kazuki and Yuya. There you go. That's a great call, in fact. Kazuki and Yuya. They're doing well, last I checked. As you know, Stardust fell to the Korean Mafia some time back, but it's up and running again. <laughs> Is that so? Yep, now that we have that settled, I only have to come up with a plan. Some way the Daidoji faction will write off as a coincidence, just in case. Like with Taichi, we need the perfect setting. Give me a bit of time. Whatever you say. I'll go along with this because I trust you. Thanks, Date-san. Stop it. This is something I want to do. There's no need for one word of appreciation. Good you're here, Kiryu. Ready? Round trip to Kamarocho and back? Have everything you need? Yeah, let's go. Straight over to Stardust. Kazuki and Yuya are both working there today. Hope you're prepared for this. We're giving that bucket list some weight to it. And there it is. Kamarocho's prevailing host club, Stardust. Prevailing, huh? <laughs> have come a long way, I suppose. Obviously, the Jing'an occupation brought some drastic changes a while back. Now it's returned to its more traditional route, so to speak. That Kazuki boy's always had a vision. You're not kidding. That's not just traditional. It's downright nostalgic. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Honestly, things never change, right in the middle of the street. Like I give a shit who you're with. The Tojo clan couldn't even get protection money from us. Get out of here. Don't come back again. 
You're freaking dead! We're gonna ruin this joint! <laughs> but the best you've got for me? Real Kamurocho natives sneeze about threats. Let me teach you. Never screw with the big boys. Nicely done, Yuya. You're as fearless as the day I met you. Kazuki-san. <laughs> I'll cover the outside. You worry about business on the inside. You know how boring it is without you in there? Come. There's always more to do. On it! Seems as popular as ever, huh? I suppose so. I appreciate you helping me get one last look at them. Slow down. Hey, that was the owner just now, right? Hell of a show. Hmm? Oh, yeah, wasn't it? <laughs> Those crooks were looking for protection money? Amazing how you all beat them back. And by the looks of it, business is booming for you boys. Supposed so. We're uh, pretty old fashioned as host clubs go. Our competitors like to say we're behind the times. But Kazuki san's a great boss, and with him in charge again, we're all eager to work here. The fact that he still pulls in such young fans is especially motivating. Us <laughs> young bloods have to keep up. <laughs> I'm glad to see people still admire Kazuki and Yuya. That'll never change. They've always been a different breed. And Kamurocho fixtures for decades. Most people have forgotten by now that the Jingon Mafia took this place some time ago. They had money, weapons, people. Things got really rough for a bit. Hmm. Jingon used Stardust to launch their Kamurocho expansion. It was a smart play. Oh, mister, you know your stuff. Have you heard the entire history behind it all? Hmm? As to why the Jingon was targeting Kamurocho in the first place, I mean. You see, the Korean Mafia was beaten, badly, by Tojo Clan Yakuza back in the 80s. Meaning, no offense, you two look like you might have been around back then. Do you know about the Dragon of Dojima? <laughs> yep, I've heard the name before, at least. <laughs> I figured, no one who knows anything about Kamurocho wouldn't know Kazuma Kiryu, after all. Yeah, Kiryu-san was a legend who kicked the Jingon out almost single-handedly. Kazuki-san and Yuya, though, had the misfortune of being his friends. So, when the Jingon Mafia finally came back, they went straight for Stardust and Retribution. You could say, Kazuki-san was just another victim of Kazuma Kiryu's legacy of violence. Huh. Not exactly sure that's accurate. You know? Don't you think? I gotta say, this city's story has always been about honest people paying for the underground sins. At least the Jingon are dead and buried now, anyway. Kiryu-san, too, so I've been told. And with all of them gone, it fell to Kazuki-san to rebuild on his own. It kills me to think of him having to bow his head to every moneylender in town. If those criminals could hear me from hell, especially Kiryu, I'd have some words for him. I see. Fair enough. That's a you've got a point. Hey! Thanks for your time. Hope we didn't bother you. No, of course not. No bother at all, sirs. Hey, where are you going? This isn't what we came for. Kazuki and Yuya are coming to Serena in a little while. Don't tell me you invited them there. Hm. I'm not saying you have to reveal yourself. It's just a chance to hear them, see how they're really doing. No. I saw for myself they're doing well. And I've heard enough. Oh, come on, don't say that. I promise you, whatever that toddler of a host said, 
Kazuki and Yuya don't agree with him. I've never heard them utter one word of resentment. Even still, I... Honestly, just come upstairs. What's a Kamarocho trip without revisiting this place anyway? Think of it as part of the tour. Ah, there you are. Good to see you, Kazuki. Yuya. Likewise. Thank you for inviting us. Not every day the legendary detective of Kamurocho asks you out for drinks. Hmm. Is that the kind of barefaced flattery Stardust customers get treated to, Yuya? That wasn't flattery. Everyone knows I speak my mind, pure and simple. All right, all right. Hey, by the way, this place is empty. You didn't, like, reserve the whole bar for us, did you? Not at all. This is the slow time of night. Always clears out around now. Come on, Yuya. Don't be presumptuous. Okay, Kazuki-san, but I bet you were thinking the same thing. Here it is, trying to clear your name by muddying mine. I apologize for that, Date-san. Oh, get this, Date-san. Know what happened earlier? Some small-timers actually came around for protection fees. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Happened to be down the street during the confrontation. Well thought. Uh, don't tell anyone I said that. Technically, I probably should have arrested you. How are you always so up to date? Rolling on Stardust's front door just now? Gotta say, it actually brought back memories. Yeah? Of what sort? Huh. <laughs> Do you have to ask? I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. Yep. Dead to rights, yeah? <laughs> Come on, don't keep me in suspense. Back in the day, Yuya would hurl Yakuza hither and yon from our doorway. I'm gonna say for one, Kiryu-san, naturally. I get it now. Of course he'd come to mind. Hard to believe that was almost 20 years ago now. Yeah, crazy. I can count on one hand the fights I've lost in my life. But I've never felt strength like his before or since. That first night, he looked just like any other mid-rank soldier come to squeeze us. Huh. Little did you know you were picking a fight with the dragon of Dojima. Time never slows down, huh? Soon, Kiryu-san will have been dead for as long as I knew him when he was alive. Kiryu keeps a bottle on reserve just in case he ever shows up again someday. One of our most expensive bottles, in fact. It doesn't exactly help our bottom line. Well, Yuya's not alone there. Sometimes I'm stunned he's been gone so long. But everyone in this district who ever met the guy feels that, now and again. Maybe. Still, he had a way of bringing trouble wherever he went, wouldn't you say? Stardust must have surely suffered over the years because of him, no? Your doorman has something of a grudge against him, in fact. Can't in good faith deny that, I guess. Talk about someone the world just has it out for. There were times he'd waltz in, and you'd know a storm was coming. I don't know. Do you think Kiryu-san would forgive me if he heard me say that? It's fine. If you're still carrying this with you, might as well let it out. Okay. Thing is, no one ever took the brunt of it worse than Kiryu-san himself. When that man clenched his jaw and furrowed his eyes, all your doubts would disappear. I'll never forget the first time we met. He was ready to overthrow the Tojo clan, all on his own. But then, you found a little girl worth 10 billion yen, and decided to protect her like she was his own blood. After that, Kiryu-san became an icon to this city. Anyone who knew him knew the courage he could instill. Every twist and turn, all our troubles and hard times felt bearable then. Yeah. That's what Kiryu's son was to us. That's why it's so hard to believe he's gone for good. Hey. Date-san. Hmm? Why tonight? Why invite both of us here all of a sudden? Did anything happen recently? 
what do you mean? Hmm, I wonder. News of Kiryu-san, perhaps? A sighting, a rumor, a word? Some sliver of evidence somehow suggesting that his death was a faint? Uh, don't do this to yourselves. I'm sorry, but I called you because I felt like seeing some old friends. I see. And that's all it is? Ah, come on. Can you blame us for hoping for something more? <sighs> you too. Kazuki-san likes to say that Kiryu-san deserves to have us honor his legacy. That's why Stardust was worth all the scraping and clawing it took to get it back. Yeah, that must have been difficult. But from the looks of it, Stardust has truly recovered. Kamurocho itself, even. Like the city's healing from Tenkaichi Street out. For the first time in a long time, I think I'd be proud for him to visit us again. I'd like him to know that we're still standing. I suppose I understand Yuya and his bottle now. It's all right. I have a feeling he's damn proud of the both of you. Believe me, there's not a doubt in my mind. I should apologize for dragging you all the way up there. I know you're busy. You don't have to do that. I appreciate all the work it took. Kazuki and Yuya, well, feel free to tell me I was right. Those two have always looked up to you. Maybe Kamurocho can become a little bit better if its people don't forget the man who fought for it. How was it hearing all that? It was good. I felt happy. Like listening in on your own funeral, though. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable, I suppose. Although, what better way to find perspective on the life you've led than that? No one expects they're the poor bastard everyone will say good riddance over. Except maybe you. You think you only ever put people in danger. I'm gonna prove to you you're wrong. I'm working on another clandestine reunion. Stay in touch until then. Thanks for the drink. See you again soon. <sighs> Good night, Kiryu. Do your best to hold on to what they said. Oh, good to see you, Kiryu. Are you set? I'd like to take you somewhere. I assume you're ready to go? I'm prepared. Good. As it happens, there are a few familiar faces visiting Eugene's show at the moment. Uh, I suppose that's pure coincidence. Would you believe I didn't invite them? The Seiryu clan did. To prepare for the dissolution, Ebina has been in touch with regional families across Japan. These two have come to answer his call. All the way from Hiroshima. Onomichi, actually. Onomichi? A Yome Alliance subsidiary, the Hirose families Tagashira and Matsunaga, here in Ijinsho right now. Huh. Tagashira. Matsunaga. They're here to investigate the Seiryu for themselves. Unfortunately, Captain Nagumo couldn't make it. Investigate, you said? If Ebina's dissolution succeeds, every Yakuza group in the country will feel its effects. No matter where they're located, no family can ignore Yokohama right now. So, Tagashira and Matsunaga are here to survey and report back on behalf of the Yome. Wow. They're representing all of Hiroshima, that means. The Hirose family might have started small, but they've been making a name for themselves. Many would credit their old patriarch, Toru, for that. He died doing wet work for the former Yome chairman. He died loyally. As such, he left behind a family worthy of respect. They report directly to the chairman now. 
which means your boys are officers of the main family. They're trusted with a lot these days. I see. How about that? What's wrong? You've got that look on your face. You don't want to see him? It isn't that. Not exactly. I'm worried how they'd react if they knew I survived. <laughs> Why? Think they'd take it poorly? The Hirose family was small, but they were as tight-knit as any family I've seen. As soon as I entered their lives, that all changed. And Hirose's death was a direct consequence of that. If I'd never set foot in Hiroshima, Tagashira and the others might still have their boss. I never apologized to them. In fact, I took the easy way out by going into hiding. How could I ever show my face to them again? Who said you'd show your face? Hang back, just like with Kazuki and everyone. Hear Tagashira himself say what they think of you. <laughs> Honestly, you should get how this works by now. Maybe so. Remember, Hiroshima is part of your legacy. The last heroic stand of Kazuma Kiryu. Tagashira and Matsunaga saw history made there. Don't you find the prospect intriguing? Hearing their thoughts on your final moments? That's a sad way of putting it. You make it sound like I'm some voyeur. <laughs> Either way, the timing of their Ijin Cho trip is perfect for us. Don't question serendipity. They're drinking at a bar nearby right now. Let's not miss them. See them there, Kiryu? Those are your boys. Yeah. It's like they haven't changed at all. Same as when we met. Well, not completely. It's strange seeing them with subordinates of their own. For shit's sake. How long are they gonna make us wait? Came all the way to Yokohama for this? Hmm. <laughs> They're treating us like dirt here. Supposed to be honored guests. Savor you hospitality, my ass. We're Hiroshima dignitaries for crying out loud. Hmm. Doesn't seem like they're in a good mood. Are they that pissed off that a girl hasn't sat down with them yet? Really? Not sure. Hard to tell from just eavesdropping. <laughs> right then. I'll take it from here. Let's get a better look at these big shots, huh? Date-san, what are you doing? The Daidoji faction doesn't own me, in case you've forgotten. I can say hi to whomever I want. Date-san! Damn it. Hmm? And just, who might you be? Tokyo Metropolitan, Detective Makoto Date. Are you too familiar with me? <laughs> we look like guys with lots of cop friends. Go polish your badge. Should warn you, these two pups ain't housebroken. Any closer and they might bite you. Hey, calm down. There's no need to be a prick. The hell? You got your head screwed on wrong, or you just want to die, old man? Whoa, hold a second to Gashua. Tokyo detective named Date, he said. Kiryu Aniki had a buddy called that, right? Huh? Ah, now that you mention it, it... Wait, so then what's he doing here? You're Hirose, Tagashira and Matsunaga, correct? Be happy to buy you boys a drink. I'm off duty, not looking to bust anyone. Just want some company, same as you two, from what I can see. Yeah, well, the girls here ain't exactly swarming us. Uh, you sure about this, Aniki? I mean, knocking them back with the fuzz? You heard him. Man's off duty right now. We're just three assholes, no titles and nothing. This way, we never drank with the enemy team. Yeah, that's what you're saying, right, Dante-san? Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. Well, all right then. Matsunaga Aniki says you can buy his drinks. You can buy his drinks. Good, I appreciate it. Let me ask you both something. You sounded pretty pissed off before. 
Why was that? It's never just because of the girls. Nah, it wasn't about that. Yokohama's a long trip for us, and we're being treated like hicks. There's ex-Yakuza all over town, and they're eyeing us like we got a disease. The Seiryu clan sure as hell not offering to cut us into anything worth a damn. Why even invite us? Too worried about their own profits taking a hit. <laughs> I mean, look around. They're scoping us out from every angle. They all stare, but nobody says as much as hello. Wait a second. You mean everyone here is Yakuza? Eugene shows got ex Tojo and Omi guys crawling around like roaches right now. <laughs> We're doing fine for ourselves out west in Hiroshima. Only came by to be courteous. What he means is the Yomei Alliance asked us directly, and we followed orders. I wonder, is your table so barren because they're trying to ice you out? Maybe women around here are smart enough not to drink with a couple of small-town bumfucks. Say that again, asshole! Whatever it is you're looking for here, you're not gonna find it. So screw off. Oh, whoa, 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 big talk from men that what got dissolved, huh? You bastards really want to throw down, huh? Go ahead! Nobody cut our family's balls off! Whoa, Hiroshima thugs are all talk, right? I'm sure we can take them. Catch the next train home, fuckers, or we'll punch your ticket for you. Ah, uh, who the hell's that? Hey, you need to stay back, damn it. Kiryu. Huh? Kiryu, uh, Kiryuin. Kiryuin? date san you know this guy? Oh, no. Uh, I mean, maybe. Hiroshima dignitary should know better than to disrespect the cities they visit. This is how blood starts running. What's your deal? We'll handle this from here, right, Dante Senpai? Yes, of course. This is my junior partner, Kiryuin. Okay, everything's settled. You two leave while you can. <laughs> You're out of your mind. This ain't no one's fight but ours. Damn it, stop. You're in enough crap already. Stay back. <laughs> My turn. Who's that? I'll take you out. In for the kill. Are you done with all the morning games yet? This is the one I'm going to fight. Allow me. Ready for the knockout. Let's finish this! Now we're talking. You want some? Have fun with this. Light. A train tag! Doing the thing up. Oh. There's Sweet. more where this came from. Yes! Ah! Ha 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 Hey, this is a story from back home. Who knew a junior detective could throw haymakers like that? Nah, <laughs> only out here would you find a cop stronger than a Yakuza. <laughs> Stronger. Ah, he's good, but I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I get it now, though. No wonder Tokyo PD got these city yakuza nude so bad, huh? Right, champ? <laughs> Sorry about him. He doesn't say much. That's a good quality in people. <laughs> Strong and silent. No, actually, he reminds me of a guy we knew. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was thinking the same thing. Kiryaniki, same kind of mojo. Oh? Exactly. Something about this quiet son of a gun reminds me so much of him. Mm -hmm. Huh, is that so? I'm not sure. After all, I've known Kiryu much longer than you two would have. <laughs> no offense, but he's much cooler than this one. No, you know, you know what? That's a very good point. <laughs> I mean, look at him. Take a shot. Look at this guy. I mean, Kiryaniki was way more badass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, probably so. <laughs>
Although, strange how alike your names are. Kiryu, Kiryuin, right? Um... <laughs> Ah, uh, both names sound tough, I'd say. Except Kazuma Kiryu. Woo! Man, that name's just on another level for us. From the moment we first met him, he redefined what the Yakuza meant. Hmm. That he did. How? What did he do for you? Was it even a change for the better, do you think? Well, that's hard to say. Kiryu Aniki guided us through dark times. Our patriarch Hirose died. So did Chairman Kurusu. Onomichi's big secret came out, and it's still getting attention. And then, the man we took as our Aniki got killed. Oh, could have asked him so much more. Just stormed in one day and <laughs> fixed up messes. Like pulling up every rotten weed that sprung since World War II. And now, the police say that Kazuma Kiryu took all the other mysteries with him to his grave. But that's gotta be a load of bull. They gotta know more than they're telling us. Plus, all the big shot politicians who got their asses saved by the cover up? Those, uh, Dai Doji, what do you call them? Of course, they're the reason the Omei Alliance made us a direct subsidiary. I guess that the Hirose family came out all the better thanks to Kiryu Aniki at the end of the day. Nowadays, we got way more prestige. All the Onomichi locals tease us about it, though. I think that's a good thing. Oh, wouldn't you agree? But putting all that aside, there's something about the whole thing that still hurts. Yeah, you got that right. What is it, if I may ask? The Hirose family's down to just three proper members between Captain Nagumo and us. Our youngest officer was named Yuta. And he's off in Okinawa living his dream life. <laughs> Good for him. But his Yakuza just feels like things are never gonna be as good as they were then. Here, you Aniki inspired us to heights we never imagined ourselves in. Seriously, Kazumu Kiryu's final battle, and we were there to see it. Hiroshima woke up for one big, incredible moment. Then, went back to being the same old sleepy town as it ever was. Just... empty and tired. <sighs> Helps knowing Patriarch Hirose would have wanted it that way. What? He got to spend his last minutes fighting Kazuma Kiryu with everything he had. When he died, it looked like he was at peace. Yeah, I will never forget that. For the old man, part of it must have been finally not having to do Takeru Kurusu's dirty work anymore. Even still, he was a model Yakuza, and he died a Yakuza's death. More and more, I've been getting into dumbass fights like that one. Just looking to cash my chips in. If you two hadn't stopped us, <laughs> we might have died bleeding out in this cheap hostess bar. Now that's a Yakuza's death. It's a red stain on a tacky carpet. A long ways from home. How the hell did it get this bad without us even noticing? Between Hirose-san and Kiryu Aniki, all we talk about anymore is the ones we lost. Same old shit every day, over and over. They could see us right now, they'd be ashamed. And you know what? It was seeing Kiryu Insan fight just now that made me realize it. Say that again. <laughs> Funny how little things like that can open your eyes. Hmm, what's going on now? Are you leaving? I'm still buying. No need to quit early. That's all right. We're headed home. Seiryu clan's been investigated by us enough, I'd say. Right now, all I want is to tell Captain Nagumo everything that happened here tonight. Oh, what will you say to him? That over in Jean show, we finally met someone. Kuriyaki might have seen something in it. 
Hmm? Now, Cap will never believe us, not in a million years. He'll say we're drunk and stupid, but I'm gonna tell him. Even if it shouldn't have been possible, I saw what I saw tonight. So did I. Oh, oh well, that's great. All right, I won't keep you any longer. In that case, let me say one last thing to you both. The Siryu clan's plot, all these Yakuza massing underneath them, they can't be trusted. Hiroshima needs to stay as far out of this as it can. With respect and all, no shit, detective. That Ebina's a smooth-talking swindler, but the Yomei Alliance ain't dumb enough to fall for it. Hiroshima will steer clear of the conflict. Promise you that. Of course, Kiryu-san. Your advice is appreciated. We're bidding Yokohama farewell now, if that's all right. Okay. Nice meeting you. It's good to see you, Kiryu and son. <sighs> Maybe I'm crazy, but I get the feeling they might have figured you out. <laughs> Maybe they did. Sheesh. If your boys ended up in that brawl, it could have painted a target on the entire Yomei Alliance. And to avoid getting sucked into war, easiest thing would be to cut off the Hirose family and be done with it. Yeah. That said, it was reckless of you to jump in there. Don't come crying to me if you get busted. Do you think I'm blaming you? I'm very grateful. If not for your initiative, I never would have spoken to those two again. Back in Hiroshima, I made a mess of things. And I left without fixing them. I didn't deserve to know what happened next. But I was always curious. <laughs> and I'm glad we did what we did. Thanks for the drinks. I'll see you again. Till then. Good night, Kiryu. Oh, good to see you, Kiryu. Are you set? I'd like to take you somewhere. I assume you're ready to go? Hmm. I'm prepared. All right. Our guest this time came all the way from Kyushu. Chief Nakajima of Nagasu Taxi. Chief Nakajima. He looked after you during your stint as a cab driver back in Fukuoka, didn't he? Hey, what's up? You remember him, right? Don't tell me I wasted my time calling him here. You didn't. Besides, I wouldn't be that ungrateful. It's just... I never thought I'd see him again. Chief Nakajima was about the only civilian I spent a lot of time with. You tried running from your past back then, too, didn't you? Even went by the alias Taichi Suzuki and everything. Trouble always finds you somehow. In the past and even now. You said you called a chief here? How was he? He must be getting along in years now. Did he seem well? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you go see for yourself? What? Did something bad happen to him? Hmm. Oh, good heavens, I can't drink that much. <laughs> well, ain't this a pickle? Oh, come on, Mr. Chief, don't be shy. Today's a special treat, isn't it? Well, you ain't wrong there. <laughs> Speaking of which, Date-san's not here yet. W I wonder what's taking him. This ain't a scam, right? You're not gonna rip me off. Don't worry! Date-san gave me a rundown. That man's a real detective, you know. Date-san, what was with that ominous look earlier? <laughs> well, as you can see, he's doing great. Figured it'd make you appreciate the reunion more. Cab company's not exactly doing well. But the chief does everything he can to keep it going. That's great. 
Glad to hear it. <laughs> Thought so. Wait. Date-san, you've never met Chief Nakajima before, right? How did you even get him to come all the way here? Well, I might have abused a bit of my police authority. Told him that I wanted to ask him about his former employee, Taichi Suzuki. What? Also told him it was a personal investigation, and that we couldn't talk over the phone since the higher-ups don't know about it. I asked if he could come to Yokohama instead. You do know how suspicious that sounds, right? I'm surprised the chief fell for that. I offered to cover his travel expenses, so it's basically a paid vacation. His drinks at this club are even on me. Oh, don't give me that look, man! What? I was just worried about you. You're always coming up with all these lies for me. I thought I told you this before. I'm only doing all this because I want to. Don't sweat it. Ten years ago, he told me himself to come back and work for him again, no matter what. He gave me a hand when I hit rock bottom, and... I was never able to thank him for that. Got it. Guess it'll be on me to tell him all of that. <laughs> this place sure is a riot! Hey, maybe I ought to move the Yokohama myself. Wow, would you really? Then you could come visit me every day. I'll be here waiting. <laughs> Boy, I do that and I'll be broke in no time. Oh. Pleasure meeting you, Chief Nakajima. I'm Date. You been enjoying yourself? Oh, gosh darn it, I'm sorry. Got a little carried away there. Nearly forgot I was meeting up with you, Mr. Detective. No need for the formalities. Thanks for coming all the way here. Mind if I take a seat? Oh, no, not at all. Please do. Still, to think Suzuki-san's name would come up again. But like I told you on the phone, the last I saw Suzuki-san was ten years ago. How's that even gonna help the police? Well, truth be told, I knew Suzuki personally outside my work as a detective. Honestly, I just wanted to have a drink with someone else who knew him. Sorry for making a fuss out of this, Chief. Oh, no, no, it's fine. You even paid for me to travel here at all. Besides, I feel the same way about Suzuki-san. Wasn't one for words, but I could never forget him. Just that kind of fella, you know. So what happened? Did Suzuki-san cause some kind of incident? He ain't getting arrested, is he? Huh? No, I'm not going to arrest him. See, Suzuki's been dead for a few years now. Huh? Come again? You ain't pulling my leg or nothing. You didn't know? No, not at all. I had no clue. So that's what happened to Suzuki-san? I can't believe my ears. He was always so serious. A real dedicated fella. Hey, something doesn't seem to be adding up here. Just double-checking. You were aware that Taichi Suzuki was a fake name, right? A fake name? Nah, ain't no way. That doesn't sound right. No siree. Uh-huh. Okay, then. Why don't you settle down and hear me out? Taichi Suzuki was a fake name. His real name was Kazumu Kiryu, a Yakuza from the Tojo clan, known as the Dragon of Dojima. You're talking about the same Suzuki-san? Ah, that's gotta be a lie. Some big mistake. You ever consider that the Suzuki-san I know and the Suzuki-san you know are two different people? Fine, then. So that's how you want to play. Then explain this. Take a good look at this photo. This guy looks real familiar, doesn't he? Perhaps you've seen this on TV before. You're looking at Kazuma Kiryu. Shortly after this footage aired, he was sent to prison, then lost his life in Hiroshima. Frankly, that don't sound like the Suzuki-san I know. What, really?
Guess I should have looked into your story more carefully before coming all the way out here. If I had known we were talking about two different people, I wouldn't have let you pay for my whole trip. Now hold on, sir. What's with the act? Huh? We both know for a fact that Kiryu went by Suzuki in Kyushu. So why are you pretending you don't know him? Well, I ain't pretending. There was just a little mix-up. Sorry, my mistake. I'll even pay for my own drinks, too. Take care now! No, wait. Please. I think we're done here. Besides, I ought to get going. <laughs> Let go! What has gotten into you? Nothing. You're just being a bother. Wait, please. Hey, stop right there, sir. Ooh, what's going on? Why all the yelling? Judging by the way you wanted to run from me, I think I get what's going on. Huh? What about? You probably did come here to talk about Taichi Suzuki, and maybe squeeze in some sightseeing on the side. But with how you're acting, I'm guessing you saw this recently. Oh, that's, uh... Your plans changed when this video started going around. Suddenly, rumors that Kazuma Kiryu is still alive and kicking spread all over the internet, despite his supposed death. Word got to you too, didn't it? Right after you agreed to meet with me here. I don't know a thing about that. What's going on? If Kazuma Kiryu really is alive and in hiding, then you wouldn't want to tip off the police. Even a minor detail about his past runs the risk of endangering him. Long story short, you don't want to sell your friend out to the police. But after coming all the way to Yokohama, it looked just as suspicious to cancel our meeting. Uh... It all makes sense now. That's why you're trying to act like you don't know Kazuma Kiryu. You got the wrong idea. That's completely off. Where you're coming from, you probably aren't too sure if I really am Kiryu's friend. In that case, it'd be best for you to say I've got the wrong guy. Keep mum and leave your seat. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Chief Nakajima, this has all been one huge misunderstanding. Huh? Neither Tokyo PD nor the Fukuoka police knew that Kiryu had been employed at Nagasu Taxi. Have you ever gotten a call from the police asking after him? I'm positive you haven't, because I'm the only one who knows about your connection to Kiryu. After all, I heard all of this from the man himself. In fact, he even told me about the first time you two met. He helped out a woman who was being harassed but let himself get beat up in the process. At the time, he had nowhere to go since he had to cover up his history with the Akaza. He nearly gave up on life. That's when you entered the picture. You took him on and hired him as a taxi driver. That guy's known as the legendary Yakuza. You think he'd crack in the interrogation room? I heard all of this straight from the horse's mouth. I may not know what's going on in his head, but I consider him my best friend. Date-san. Well, that sure explains a whole lot. Guess it can't hurt to trust you then. <laughs> How about we turn back the clock? Start fresh, take it from the top. <laughs> Works for me. I found out that Suzuki-san was actually Kazuma Kiryu from the news. Saw him in that Yakuza scuffle up in Kamurocho. Must have been a little while after he left our place. All his old co-workers were pretty shaken up, me included. Sure, I knew he was no run-of-the-mill guy, but I never thought he'd be THE legendary Yakuza. Also, just between us, a lot of my employees are hiding scars because of something or other in the past. Same goes for me, too. So I was never, ever gonna rat out Kiryu-san to the police. But the moment I told myself that, news got out about Kazuma Kiryu dying somewhere in Hiroshima. That must have been shocking. Of course it was. But now, 
What the heck even was that video? I can't make heads or tails of nothing no more. You know something, don't you, Date-san? Is Kazuma Kiryu... Is Suzuki-san still alive? Please, Date-san. Well, I guess it wouldn't be right if I just lied to your face after unraveling all that, so... I'm just gonna say... No comment. No comment? <laughs> That's not enough for you? <laughs> That's great. Real great. Just what I needed to hear. You know, you're a lot like Suzuki-san. No tact, no skill of lying, and a good man. This coming from you, you're just as bad at lying. <laughs> you got me there. After getting to know you, Chief, I think I get why he wanted me to pass on a message. Huh? When the two of you first met, he had just drifted all the way to Kyushu in order to protect his loved ones from his own past. That was the lowest point in Kiryu's life, in a place with no one he knew, with no one to turn to, with no one to talk to or depend on, until you showed up and lent him the hand he needed. Mm-hmm. Words can't describe how indebted he feels to you. Still does, to this day. Ha, that's so. And I got something to say to him, too. And what's that? The last time I saw Suzuki-san, I left him with these words. You're part of the family now, Suzuki-san. Just be sure to come back to us, no matter what. Hmm. I still stand by those words today. So if you ever find yourself in trouble, you'll always have a home with us. I'll be waiting for you back in Kyushu. So just remember, you're never alone. Think you could tell him all that from me, Date-san? Ah. <laughs> Thanks again, Date-san. Got to wrap up some unfinished business there. Now the Chief finally knows how much I appreciated him. There's nothing more I can do now. Come on, don't be like that. All oh, right, that reminds me. You said I was your best friend? No, uh, I, I mean, I was just trying to, uh, you know, or the Chief's trust. I had to. Your words really cut me to the core. They were comforting in a way, especially in these times. Could you not take back what you said? Yeah, of course. Hey, you want to hug it out? I'm not drunk enough for that. Yeah, figured. Oh, good to see you, Kiryu. Are you set? I'd like to take you somewhere. I assume you're ready to go? Hmm. I'm prepared. Great. Then let's get going. When was the last time you saw Sayama, anyway? When I moved to Okinawa, so that'd be... a little over 15 years now. We first met in 2006. To think it's been 17 years. Kaoru Sayama, a former detective in the Osaka police, and the ace of Division 4, the Anti-Yakuza Task Force. We partnered together for a certain incident regarding the Tojo clan. And then... As the bomb kept ticking down, I decided to spend the last moments of my life with this incredible woman. Damn, 15 years? I haven't seen her for a while either, but nowhere near as long as that. Earlier, she said she's here on business. Asked me if I wanted to catch up and all. I'm something of a big shot at work, you know. What's with the big talk? <laughs> Nobody else would listen to me brag. Well, it might have been 15 years, but Siam is as sharp as ever. There's a chance she'll spot you at a distance, so we better play it safe. I don't know. 
There is also a chance she's forgotten all about me. You're hopeless. Here, take these. Wireless earphones and mic. We usually use them during investigations, but I'll loan these to you. That way, you can listen in on the conversation, and I'll be able to hear what you have to say, too. Come on, let's get moving. She hasn't changed one bit. You look busy, as usual. How long are you here for? <laughs> I'll be leaving the day after tomorrow. How's Tommy Osan doing? She's great. Mama's been manning the bar every night. I think she's doing even better than me. Glad to hear it. Best you spend time with family while you can. That's certainly true. But still, it's been a long time. About six, seven years or so, right? The last time we spoke was when you called me about Kazuma's passing, I believe. Right. Sorry for dropping that bombshell back then. It's fine. I'm sure I would have heard about it sooner or later. After all, he was quite infamous among the police. <laughs> no kidding. His name always popped up whenever something big happened. You got any guys that buy into the whole Kazuma Kiryu hidden mastermind conspiracy? We do, yes. Kazuma Kiryu is actually still alive. He's been pulling the strings behind society as we speak. Hmm. Those rumors, right? <laughs> what kind of officer would say that? It's complete nonsense. Well, yes, that means his legacy was that impactful. Can't blame folks for making him into some urban legend, especially if they never knew him. I suppose so. <sighs> But to think he's gone, even now, I still can't fathom it. <sighs> How can someone as tough as him just die? How? When I've seen him cheat death time after time. Unbelievable, right? He was one stubborn son of a gun. He really was. Still married to the job? Pretty much. Heard you transferred to the juvenile division. That was news to me. Shocking, right? Some career path. But you requested to transfer, right? There a reason for that? There is, actually. It's all because of the dissolution. The Great Dissolution? Yeah. Remember how Daigo Dojima and other big names started a security company after all that went down? It was a haven for former Yakuza. Right. I figured if Kazuma were still alive, he would have lent them a hand. That man is practically the icon of the old Yakuza and all. I'm sure he would have taken it upon himself to clean up after them, too. Hmm. And if they were in charge of the cleanup, then as a cop, I could work on prevention. At least that's what I thought. In other words, you're trying to prevent kids from becoming petty criminals or joining the Yakuza. Hence the transfer. Right you are. It's tougher than I thought, but it's rewarding work. And that way you could feel connected to Kiryu. <laughs> That's one way to put it. I wanted to sound cool, that is. But yeah, that's why I'm bent on pursuing my new dreams. And that's why I want to keep doing what I can, but... Maybe a part of me is still waiting for him. Hmm. Aren't I just so faithful? <sighs> Sayama, look, the truth is... Don't, Dante-san. Uh, it's fine. <sighs> uh, something wrong? Uh, no, you're just... You're just way too good for him. Thanks for that, Date-san. 
Seems I was a luckier man than I thought. Seriously? You're telling me. You sure you don't want to tell her anything? I'm sure. As long as she's got a dream to chase, she's better off without me around. That's the hardest pill to swallow. But you know what, Kiryu? What? You should live how you want to. If there's a woman you love, you hold on to her. Never let go. I'm getting jealous just looking at you. <laughs> I guess you'd know best, considering you've gone through a divorce before. What? Low blow, man. Sorry. It was just a joke. Thanks, Date-san. <laughs> a real heartbreaker, aren't you? But I meant it. Yeah, every word. Just do what you want to do. You've got tons of folks on your side supporting you. And don't you forget that. I won't. This brings back memories. It's good to see you, Suzuki-san. Mm. Thanks. All right if I stop in? No need to ask. You're always welcome here, friend. Sir, is there something on my face? Uh, no, of course not. I apologize. <laughs> Just a little joke I have. After all, there's always something on my face. Can I ask, have you been in Yokohama a long time? Well, now I haven't kept count. Must be over a decade at this point. Huh. That is quite a while. One more question, sorry. Um, do you happen to have a favorite food? Hmm. Good question. Why do you ask? Cold noodles. Any chance you're uh, partial to them? Guilty as charged. I do fancy a bowl now and again, yes. It's just... I once knew someone who preferred them as well. He was practically an older brother to me. And you bear such a striking resemblance to him. I couldn't help thinking that, maybe... Hmm. Forgive me. This isn't your concern. Nonsense, sir. So long as I'm proprietor, my customers' concerns are my own. <laughs> Makes me feel a bit better to hear that. Suzuki-san. I get the sense you've endured some hardships. Enough time spent behind a bar, you can read most by their face alone. Then tell me, bartender. What do I have on my face? You were always strong. So you never learned to ask for help. And too few know when you've been hurt. That's the impression I get, anyway. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'm joking again. That's how almost every man starts seeing himself past middle age. Especially the ones with such worn and chiseled faces. <laughs> Sounds like that must apply to you, too. Uh, before I came to own this place, I also lived in a world with no room for weakness. Mm -hmm. Forget it. It's not important. Whatever you say. Let me put it like this. I was raised believing that vulnerability was the enemy of survival. I carried that dogma with me for too long. Is it the same for you, perhaps, Suzuki-san? Are you saying your outlook's changed since then? I accept help when offered now, to one degree or another. 
while trying to give those around me whatever help I can. And I'm content with how things are. Maybe that's what it means to have a real home. And to do more with life than just survive it. That's an admirable point of view. You've fought so many battles and loved so many people. Maybe all that's left of you are your scars. How could anyone call this a just world when men like you can't be promised a good, proud ending? <laughs> Come on. How do you know you say that to all the guys? I'm saying it to you. Saying it as someone who's found a happiness here that I worry you never could. Again and again, you've been denied peace and rest. You've been denied something as precious as your name itself. But right now, for this one moment, you have people willing to help you if you ask them to. After all the tragic mistakes, their camaraderie is what proves you're still a noble man. Hey, uh, is it just me or are they staring at us right now? The bartender's never usually so chatty. <laughs> Wonder what they're saying. I can't simply tell you to embrace vulnerability, but try depending on them while you can. After all, you're getting up there in years. <laughs> you're almost too big to be told what to do. It's uncanny. You're so much like him, bartender. My old Aniki in another life. May I say, sir, that if the day does come when you're able to take back your name, I'd like to see you then. We'll speak frankly. Neither of us will have anything left to hide. I'll pour you a drink worthy of yourself that day. On the house. Naturally. For what it's worth, I liked this drink too. I think I should go. Thank you for the conversation, bartender. <laughs> The pleasure was mine, friend. Always happy to help. Appreciate it. So long. Now you know why it's called Survive. <laughs> Names are such powerful things. Okay. Sorry. She's a go. Wait up, wait up. Come on. I was calling your name and everything, she's a go. Oh, sorry, Mickey. Hmm? That keychain. You know, I've been wondering, that little guy on your keychain, who is he? <laughs> oh him? Ono Michio. He's Ono Michi's mascot. Didn't you know? Uh, no. Why would I? I mean, yeah, I know you said you were from there, but seriously, like, the heck is he? <laughs> he's just a mascot, and he's my favorite. I'm not kidding. He's really special to me. <laughs> you sure have strange tastes, Shizuko. You think? Surgery is the only way I'll get better. If I don't get that surgery, I can't marry Michio Kun. Uh, but I'm not brave enough. Oh, I'm so scared. I'll do it. It might hurt, but I'll push through. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll be brave for you. It was Shizuko. Hey, Shizuko, we're going the same way, right? Let's walk home together. Mm, sorry, nothing came up today. I'm going to some place called Kamurocho Hills. You are? That's kind of far. Are you okay walking by yourself? You only just moved here after all. It's not like you know where you're going. <sighs> I'll be fine. 
I looked up directions. Seriously, don't worry. See ya, Nikki. Okay. It's a rough neighborhood, so just be careful. See ya. You got time, right? Wanna hang out with us? There's a great little spot nearby. My treat, of course. Uh, no, thank you. I really have to get going. Hey, hang on a sec. There's no need to act like that, is there? What are you even doing over here? You looking for a sugar daddy? Uh, not at all. I, I just got lost and... Hey, come on. Like we buy that? Now, let's make some memories. What do you say? Someone help! Please! Get your hands off her. Touch Shizuko again. You're dead. <laughs> Yo, what? Who the fuck is he? Wait. You know my name? <sighs> You're out of your league. Now get lost. I won't wait around forever. This guy's a freak. Hey, are you good, man? Let's bail. We won't forget this, you old fuck! <sighs> Damn kids. Um, thank you so much. Hmm? Oh, no, no, uh, don't mention it. Take care. Um, sir? I wanted to ask. Hear you, son, right? It's you, isn't it? <laughs> it is you! I know it! The same Kiryu who introduced me to Michio-kun. <laughs> oh, wow! To think we'd meet in a place like this! It's been so long, Mr. Kiryu. Uh, yeah. Uh, been a while, Shizuko. Uh, all this time, you still remember, huh? As if I could ever forget? Far as I'm concerned, you saved my life. Your life? It's true. I've been wanting to see you again, Kiryu-san. Kiryu-san, this is such a nice surprise. Really. I'm so glad. Yeah, me too. You were just a kid last time I saw you. Sure enough, you became a young lady. No, not even close. I'm still just a high schooler. So back then, I take it the surgery went well? Yes, sir. The doctor did everything just right. And rehabilitation went well too. Now I'm better than ever. I got my life back. And I have you to thank for it. But I didn't do anything. No, you really did. I was terrified of surgery, but then you brought Michio-kun to see me. Thanks to Michio-kun, I finally had the courage. Without that, well, I might never have... <sighs> Things might have gone different. Truly, you and Michio-kun changed my life. I've wanted to say thanks ever since, for all you did. Trouble was, I had only met you once and never learned anything else about you. It's been my one big regret. I'm so happy I got this chance, more than I can say. Yeah, honestly, I'd often worry about your surgery. Thanks to today, I don't have to. <laughs> well, I never guessed you lived in Tokyo. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't find you in Onomichi. That reminds me, why are you in Kamurocho? Did you move away recently? I did. Actually, I'm studying to become a doctor. Just recently, I got accepted into a special school. So with that, my family moved out here. A doctor? <laughs> That's wonderful. If I become one, that is. My classmates are so smart. I have a hard time keeping up. Still, it's my hope I'll save someone's life someday. I'll help them, just like my doctor helped me. So with that, I'll keep on studying. I'm gonna make this dream of mine come true. 
You've really grown up, Shizuko. And it's a great dream. Keep going, and I'm sure you'll get there. Right. And hey, if you ever get sick, look me up. I'll help you get better. <laughs> you never know. Hey, thanks. If that happens, I'll know who to call. <laughs> okay! Uh, well, should we get going? If I recall, you've got somewhere to be, right? I'll walk you. People aren't too friendly around here. Okay. Thank you so much. For the future, try not to come here alone again, okay? Yes, sir. I got lost, is all. I'll remember not to walk around Komorocho by myself. Your keychain. It's Onomichio. Guess you're still a fan, huh? <laughs> of course! It's like I always say, I'm gonna marry him someday. Yeah, I remember you said that even way back. So it's become a doctor and marry Michio, huh? <laughs> Personally, I think you can find someone better. Huh? But why? Michio Kun's so funny and gentle and strong. <laughs> what more could you want in a husband? Nah. Truth be told, he's a handful. He's also stubborn, clumsy, and awkward to a fault. Um... Hear you, son? Hmm? This may be kind of forward, but... Uh, the man in the Michiokum costume back then... Was that...? There you are. Been looking for you, old man. Thought I'd pay back what I owe you. Figure with my buds here, I'll add a little interest. Mm, hear you, son? Just hang back, Shizuko. You're safe with me. But wait, if you get hurt... If it means protecting you, a couple scratches is more than worth it. Hey, now, what's this? You gonna run for it, huh? You're gonna wish I had. But sorry, no. I'd never embarrass myself in front of a kid. I'm not holding back. If you've got a death wish, take your best shot! Show me what you got. Follow my lead. Nothing personal. Let's finish this! Hope you're ready. No begging for mercy now. I won't be Time to throw you down. Doing better Moving than up on the world. <laughs> Strong, sweet. Woo. Kiryu san, are you all right? Yeah. Believe me, that was nothing. Are you okay, Shizuko? Thanks to you, Kiryu san, you saved me. Like you did last time. Right. Anyway. Let's go. Uh, y y yes, sir. Thanks so much for everything today. You even showed me around. <laughs> Nonsense. Happy to do so. Please, I want you to have this. My way of saying thanks. Use it, wear it, whatever you like. <laughs> and look, here, san we even match. You sure I can have this? It's pretty special to you, isn't it? Oh, no worries. I have like 50 of those at home, so it's fine. Kind of excessive, don't you think? <laughs> but thanks. I want you to know I have nothing but gratitude for you, Kiryu san. Look at me. I'm no good. I might be older now, but I'd probably be dead without you. 
And I just keep taking and never give back. Kiri-san, forgive me. I wish there was more I could do for you. Shizuko, you've done enough. Huh? I said you've done enough. In fact, today I got more than I could have ever asked for. The little girl I once knew, she shivered at the thought of surgery. Now here she is, all grown up, chasing her dream, and making every day count. Might come as a surprise, but do you know how much courage you've given me? Kiryu son. Trust me, you're gonna be a great doctor. As long as you don't give up, I know you'll make it happen. So keep at it. Do your best. Eventually, when you see people suffering like you once did, you'll know how to help. And remember this. I'll always be rooting for you. And you're a special friend, Michio-kun? I'm sure he feels the same way. <laughs> so long, Shizuko. Take care of yourself. Um... Kiryu-san? Hmm? Well, I just... Thank you, Somichi. <laughs> Back at you. Thank you, Somichi. Thank you, Kiryu-san. No. Michio-kun. it's being renovated not surprising this town's always had a high turnover rate oh for shine same name as that club I helped out in Sotombori way back when they nearly went under because of a rival club at least until I stepped in as their manager it was tough work but still a great experience I haven't seen Yuki, Koyuki, and Yoda-san since then. Hope they're doing well. But if this joint's got the same name... Hmm. Did they open up a new location? Um, excuse me. Did you need something? <laughs> Not good. Wait, have we met before? N no, I think you've got the wrong guy. Um, take care. Hmm? 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 Uh, do you need something? Oh, my gosh! It's Kiryu-san! You just vanished into thin air one day! I thought you kicked the bucket somewhere! You really ought to show your face more often! But wow, it's so good to see you! How's it going? Uh, it's been going. What about you, Koyuki? You doing okay? Is this the same Forshine? Sure is! Forshine, the hottest cabaret club in Osaka, is coming to Kanto! In fact, we're gonna have our grand opening soon! Oh yeah? That's great. So how's business? Doing well? Well, no. Not really. Yo, you Kansai clowns still haven't hit the road yet? Look, you people are the problem here. Outsiders can't just waltz on in and pop up a club whenever, wherever they want. That's not how we roll in Kamarocho. You hear me? You old hags got no place here. How many times we gotta tell you that, Koyuki-san? Ugh, here we go again. Hmm? Who's he? Some guy from one of the rival clubs. He doesn't like that we set up shop here, so he's been harassing us. Thanks to him, there are some nasty rumors going around. And to make matters worse, a few of our girls got scared off and quit. Ugh, that man's nothing but trouble. Come on now, we just want to settle things peacefully. But if you insist on running a club here, we're gonna have to insist you comply with our ways, alright? 
And this conversation's over. Honestly, I'd rather die than take orders from you. Rude bitch. Fine, then. I'll just have to beat them into you myself. And how are you gonna do that? Who the hell are you? One of their hires. As far as I know, Kamurocho doesn't roll any which way. You've got no right to mouth off about how things work around here. Right back at you, old man. Whatever. Guess I'll have to beat your ass first. I'm gonna send all of you packing. You'll wish you never set foot in my city. Let's beat him down! Follow my lead, huh? What are you doing, man? This guy eating. He's way too strong. Now beat it. Come back here, and you deal with me. You won't catch me here again. I'm so sorry about that. You helped me out of a tough spot there. The same as ever. <laughs> right, Kiryu-san? No, not necessarily. Anyway, before we were so rudely interrupted, I was just about to ask you to come on in for some tea. Step this way, please. Right behind you. Real spacious here. Not bad. <laughs> we pretty much took over the previous club. It's a great spot and all, so we went ahead and rented it out. So, what happened to Forshine after I left? Well, after you made Forshine the number one club in Sotenbori, Yuki-san, Yoda-san, and I worked as a team to keep it that way. And for 15 years, we were the best of the best in all of Kansai. Impressive, right? <laughs> sure is. Much harder to stay up top than to get there. Then, why are you here in Kamurocho, now of all times? Actually, I discussed branching out with Yuki-san and Yoda-san, but you know them. Not a greedy bone in their bodies. They didn't want to risk the club's quality dropping either. But after they retired, I was the one who ended up in charge. I figured, since I'm taking their place and all, maybe I ought to try something new, you know? I see. So Koyuki, the new owner on the block, wanted to give the Kanto expansion a shot. Well, it didn't have to be Kanto, honestly. I just really love Four Shine, and I want to share it with people outside of Kansai, too. The girls back in Sotenbori are golden. They don't need me there to run the club. That's why I thought I should challenge myself. Do something only the owner could do. That's great. I'm not surprised you went for it, given how much you cherish the place. Thank you. <laughs> Still, uh, I never knew how tough it is to run a business. It's so different from serving the customers. There are way too many factors to take into account and no end to trouble, like that guy from earlier. To think Yuki-san and Yoda-san have been doing this for years. <laughs> I can't help but respect them even more. It was one heck of a wake-up call. I had no idea so many people were looking out for us hostesses in ways we never even knew. Well, now that you realize that, I'm sure you'll do just fine. Sorry for dropping in at such a busy time. Oh no, you're perfectly fine. To be honest, I wish you'd stay. Having you as the manager would be a huge weight off my shoulders. Hey now, you're gonna put me to work again? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> just kidding. I'm serious about being short-staffed, though. We've lost a few of our girls to some threats, and some of our staff have even been headhunted. <sighs> it's gotten me kinda down recently. I guess some things never change, no matter the times. But why not ask the Sotombori Club for help? I mean, I could, but the girls there are really popular. And since we'll be opening soon, I doubt I could adjust everyone's schedule in time. 
Hmm. Then why don't you ask Yuki for help? She used to be the legendary hostess, didn't she? Yeah, she'd really turn things around. <laughs> if I could even bring myself to ask. What's happening with Yuki? Yuki-san's out there making her own dreams come true and trying something new. And what's that? Running a restaurant. She used the money she saved up from her hostess days to start it up. <sighs> Told me herself that she's been super busy since it took off. I just felt like I couldn't bother her with my problems. <laughs> Not when she's got enough on her plate. And I'd feel real bad disturbing her if she's on track to success. <laughs> Wouldn't want to drag her down or anything. That, and uh, I can't keep crawling to Yuki-san for help. I need to handle this on my own. Ow, no, ow, ow. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. It's just because I've been buried in work, my stomach's not feeling too great. Don't push yourself too hard, all right? So, Yuki's got a new place, huh? What kind of restaurant is it? She hasn't told me much about it. All I know is that she set up shop in Yokohama in a corner of a building that's got a lot of bars. Sounds like Eugene Cho. It probably is. Given the location and how she was the legendary hostess, I'm sure she's running a bar or something. I wish I could swing by, but since this is a new venture for her, I'd feel like I'd be a bother if I showed up. Well, I'm actually staying in Eugene Cho right now. Wow, a small world. You should drop in and say hi then. That'd totally make Yuki-san's whole day. I mean it. Go. Hmm? Uh, all right. Cool. Let me know how it is. And if she's worried about the club, just tell her everything's going fine and to focus on her place. Got it. I'll, uh, pass on the message. Thanks so much. And I hope you can stop by for our grand opening, Kiryu-san. Five the time, I will. I know things are tough right now, but don't overdo it. That's always been a bad habit of yours. Right, I'll keep that in mind. But still, I'm really happy I got to see you again. And I'm real proud of how much you've grown, Koyuki. I'll catch you later. All right. Smells like something good's cooking, Chief. <sighs> I've got nothing up your alley today. Hard enough just to get a meal around here. I understand, but I'm also confident you'll pull through. You know I pay well for even the tiniest morsel. <laughs> that, I never doubted. This homeless camp is actually part of Sunhee's information network. They call that man their chief. And his friends all over town are always coming to him with new stories. Security cams can't catch everything. That's why you can't underestimate word of mouth. Sorry for keeping you. We owe the chief a lot, so I just wanted to check in on him. No worries. Come on, let's go, Kiryu-san. Hey, hold on there, psycho. Hmm? Is something the matter, Chief? The man's called Suzuki-san, no? You ought to be more careful. R right Of course. <sighs> it's tiring, leading a life without being seen. This place is full of folks walking that same path. Your hardships remind me of my own. Tai Chi, Suzuki-san. <sighs> Seems we both have it rough, don't we? Well, I'm sure it's rougher on you. I hear you were once quite infamous. Unlike myself, nobody ever cared whether I lived or died. I'm sure that's not true. Believe me, it is. And if you need convincing, I've got plenty of past left untold. Ah, 
Uh, sorry, Chief, but Kiri, uh, Suzuki-san might be a little busy right now. That's so. Then I won't hold you here any longer. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I just didn't know how long he might have kept us. That was rather odd, though. Wonder what's gotten into him. What do you mean? The people here never talk about themselves, especially their past. Even I don't know the Chief's background. Considering he's the one who started the conversation, maybe he feels a connection with you, Kiryu-san. Hmm. We both live in the shadows, after all. Seems like the Chief went through a lot before he ended up here. I'm thinking he was ready to tell me some of it. One of the men in the photo must have been him in his younger days. I wonder, should I ask him about it? Chief, about that photo you showed us, who was that person with you? Oh, him. That was my old boss. We used to work at the local factory. Must have been about 10, 20 years ago. Might as well be ancient history now. Back when the sun shined a little brighter for you, you mean? Something like that. We've been trudging along a dark and thorny path, you and I. If only we had done a single thing different. Maybe we'd be walking with our heads held a little higher. Yet, here we are now. Somehow in each other's company. An odd, once-in-a-lifetime encounter. Anyway, one on the right's me, on the left was my boss. We called him Captain down at the factory. When I started working after high school, he was the one showing me the ropes. If you've been working straight out of high school, you must have worked a long time. I may not look the part now, but I was once a master mechanic. Couldn't be beat. But when automation took over the industry, it became apparent that my work was unnecessary. Eventually, they stopped hiring younger folk. We knew for years the number of applicants was tapering off. Not that there was anything I could do about it. The skills I spent a lifetime honing could be executed a dozen times faster by robots. Naturally, the company moved forward with plans to restructure, and Cap himself had the honor of giving me the boot. That must have been hard. For you and the captain. Cap, well, he and I were like family. But if he didn't fire me, then he'd be the one out on the streets. That left him with only one option. To hand me my dismissal. At that time, I was almost 50. I thought my whole life was over. But then... He said that he'd quit with me, that he'd look after me. He did that for you? Wasn't like he had any job security either. Our jobs were destined to disappear. I was merely the first in line. So we walked out the door one final time, side by side. And sure enough, the place was shuttered soon after. After so many years of service, the severance pay was peanuts. At least we didn't have any families to feed. And that's how you ended up homeless? Yeah. That's when I started to camp here. Had I been alone, I would have died a dog's death real fast. Cap was a lot smarter than me. The man took to his new lifestyle quickly. Occasionally, there'd be folks harassing us. But he'd take the lead and fight back. Everyone around him started to trust him. And eventually, he inherited the title of chief. So you can only become chief through secession. That's right. It's a practice that's lasted generations. There have even been times when folks from the underground would make us do them favors in exchange for protection. And Cap, stout-hearted man that he was, didn't flinch. As chief, he'd do anything to protect us. He continued to shoulder the burden all by himself. <sighs> Till his body gave out. He didn't bother seeing a doctor. But I bet he knew he had late-stage cancer. 
Since you're the chief now, that means he... I called out for him one morning about seven, eight years ago. But he was dead in his tent. I think it was the most peaceful I've ever seen him. And maybe it was. Because he could finally set aside the heavy burden that had been weighing him down. Me. And that's why you took on his role? To start paying it forward? Exactly. The entire time he was with me, I never took responsibility for anything. And now, at my ripe old age, I finally get a taste of the constant pressure he was under. Chief. Nobody's filled me in on why you were forced into hiding. Going as far as erasing your name. But I've heard you're not taking care of your illness, even though you're still giving Kasuka aid. A lot like what Cap did with me. Mm, something like that. Yeah. If you find that living is no longer worthwhile, the final call is yours. There's no law saying you gotta see a doctor if you're sick. However, if by any chance you change your mind, you can always come back here. You're welcome to stay at the camp for as long as I'm cheap. I never got the chance to repay Cap's kindness, but I figure helping people like you is a step in the right direction. Well, I appreciate the thought, but I can't accept your offer right now. Sorry. Yeah, I'm aware. You still got business to take care of, don't you? <sighs> At any rate, I'm glad I got to speak with you, Suzuki-san. And sorry for making you listen to such an old story. No need to apologize. I learned a lot from your story. Thanks for sharing, Chief. Takes me back. King Shireen? Has this always been here? Come on, come in! Come one, come all, and get your fill of sushi! Ah, oh, don't tell me. Quit your jabbering and stuff your pie hole with sushi! Don't be shy! Sit your bum down and enjoy! What the hell is she doing? What's this? A customer? Ah, oh, damn. Oh god, my first customer this whole week! Welcome! Hmm? I'm, uh, Suzuki. Oh. My. Gosh. It's Kiryu-san! You just up and disappeared one day, so I thought you gave up the ghost somewhere. I never thought I'd meet you here, of all places. How did you even hear about this place? Koyuki told me, actually. Oh, gotcha. Anyway, please come this way. Come on, come in, and get your fill of sushi. Sure thing. It's been so long, Kiryu-san. Like, what, 15, 16 years? Has it now? Time really does fly. Can't believe a legendary hostess is making people sushi. <laughs> now I've seen it all. <laughs> did that surprise you? It did, yeah. So, why sushi? Well, I've always wanted to run my own restaurant. Didn't matter how big or small it'd be. 
And since my specialty is chirashi sushi, I just figured, why not give it a shot with my best dish? <laughs> you know? Not a bad plan. The fact that you can put your hard-earned money toward making your dream a reality is impressive in itself. So, how's business? Doing well? Yeah, yeah! Uh, no, not at all. I make a pretty mean bowl of chirashi, too. Maybe it just doesn't pair well with booze? Hmm, maybe. Who knows? But you used to be known as the legendary hostess, right? So if you called up some of your old customers, they'll definitely come running. Yeah, I know, I could, but I can't. Doesn't feel right, you know? How so? I mean, if people only ever came here to see me, wouldn't you feel bad for the food? Because then it doesn't matter what I make for them. I shouldn't have to rely on my old rep when I'm trying to run a sushi place. It's just not right. It'd be a totally different story if I had a bar instead or a joint that runs on service and hospitality. But at my place, the Chirashi belongs in the limelight. I want people to come for my sushi, not me. Well said. Classic Yuki. You think so? I do. Sure, at first glance, things may seem overwhelming, but you've got your own principles and ideals, and you never let yourself get carried away. It's very like you. You could have gone with the trends to keep Forshine on top for over 10 years, but I'm sure it was just as important to you to strike the right balance between old and new. You stayed the best of the best because you managed to do exactly that. You've got what it takes to be a great business owner. <laughs> Probably. You really think so? <laughs> and your laugh's as creepy as ever. But it doesn't change the fact that my place ended up being a total flop. I've got so much time on my hands, I get so bored. Koyuki told me you were super busy, though. Did you lie to her? Well, yeah, I had to. I mean, I kept raving to her about taking on a new challenge, so telling her I've got nothing but time on my hands is so lame. I don't want her to worry about me either. If I told her my place was practically a barren wasteland, I feel like she'd swing by every single day. Hmm, fair point. Koyuki admires you a lot. Always has, always will. <laughs> that just made my whole day. The only reason I can even try all these new ventures is because someone as reliable as Koyuki-chan supporting me. I really appreciate her. But she's always been a hard worker. I'm a little worried she'll collapse out of sheer exhaustion one day. Hmm, about that. Things are looking a little rough on her end right now. Huh? Her club's about to have its grand opening, but they're short on staff because some guys have been harassing them. Koyuki's been doing what she can, but the new club's pretty big. I don't know if she can handle all the customers when it opens for business. Doesn't look like she's feeling great, either. Oh gosh, really? I'd totally lend her a hand if she told me. She just didn't want you to worry about her. Even said she didn't want to drag you down since you told her how busy you were. Oh, I'm not really that busy, though. Guess it's on me for trying to show off. Now I feel awful. Kiryu-san, would it be wrong if I help out Koyuki-chan? Do you think it'd annoy her? Why are you asking me about what Koyuki think? I'm sure you already know the answer yourself. Yeah, you're right, Kiryu-san. Thank you. No more being distant. Whenever Koyuki-chan's in a pinch, I'll always be there to help her. The two of us are like sisters, after all. I'm gonna pack up, get ready to head out to Kamurocho and all. I hope you'll come for Forshine's grand opening, too. If I have the time. All right. Time for this old lady to show off what she's got! There you are, Kiryu. Got some interesting news on my end. Might take a while. You good on time? Yeah, I've got time. Well, I'll give it to you straight. It's about Akiyama. Akiyama?
I take it you heard something? I did. Seems he'd made his way out of Japan. Right about when the Tojo clan and Omi Alliance disbanded. So, that would be about four years ago. And what? That's it? For now, I've tried finding him through all my contacts, but the man's a slippery one. Now, this is rumor-level intel here, but supposedly, he's been sighted in Singapore a few times. Fitting, too, since they rake in investments from all over. A guy like him would feel right at home. Well, he's been out of town this long. Any chance he'd even come back? Every time we met, he'd doubt me like no tomorrow. Kept saying you just had to be alive. He even guessed I was in on it at one point. But after I kept playing it off, I guess he got fed up. I mean, we're the ones who distanced ourselves from Akiyama. The Daidoji had us promise that, no exceptions. Yeah, I know. Can't exactly fault him for taking off like that. I'm at least glad to know he's doing well. It was always a risk, meeting with him. Man might act like a goof, but he's sharp as a tack. The moment you got close enough to listen in, he'd have sniffed you out. If that happened, you can bet the Daidoji would act real fast. Right. Guess it's time we call it, then. You've done more than enough, Date-san. Taichi, Kazuki, Yuya. You even got in touch with Sayama. Hang on. I didn't call you out here to close up shop. Rather, how would you feel about taking it a step further? Hmm? What do you mean? Let's be frank. Daidoji doesn't care who you see. At least, I don't think. That's fair to assume, right? I mean, you haven't gotten any complaints, have you? Hmm, guess not. That means either they haven't noticed what we're doing, or they're letting us get away with it. A or B, I say we go all in, and get in touch with who you want to see most. If I had to guess, that'd be Haruka. You declared yourself a dead man, and all but disappeared. That's the promise you made with the Daidoji. If you went and broke that promise, well, I can't imagine it end well for you. But still... Wait, Date-san. Hmm? What's up? When this place gets so quiet, I don't even hear anyone outside. So what's the deal? They with the Daidoji? Nah, never seen them before. Tell you one thing, though. They definitely didn't come here for a drink. What's wrong? You wanted a fight? Well, here I am. Come on! Kazuru, I'm ready. Allow me. Nothing personal. Try to stop him. Try this on your side. No second for mercy now. Have fun with this. A train now. Who are these guys? Any idea? Huh, they're definitely not any old thugs. In fact, they moved like pros. Right, guess they're not done yet. Hmm? Wait, you're... The fellas you took down here, they're a group of Liumong boys. 
Wars, called the White Masks. They'll work for anyone who pays them. Need some skulls cracked? They're there to please. Hang on. Just what are you... Akiyama? Not every day someone holds their own against White Masks. Let alone this many. And after seeing you fight, there's no mistaking it. Do me a favor and be up front, eh? Kiryu-san? <sighs> Still with the cold shoulder routine. All these years, and you can't bend a little? Wait, so you mean this whole setup was you? Sure was. Every time I asked Date-san about you, he'd give me the same crap about you being dead. No doubt he'd keep that up if I hadn't caught you red-handed, hmm? But that's just... you can't... Oh, so you would have been honest with me this time around? Well, uh, I... See? There he goes again. <laughs> Akiyama, what the hell? You must really think I'm stupid! Both of you! For all the secrecy, it was pretty obvious. No way in hell you'd die that easily. And sure enough, right when the Tojo and Omi disbanded, I got word that old Six Feet Under Kiryu made a surprise visit. <laughs> I figured for sure things must have cooled down by then. <sighs> but nope. That was all she wrote. Kazuma Kiryu's glorious return fizzled out like some urban legend. Not even a word my way, either. I guess I didn't matter since I'm not part of your little gang. Then, why are you here today? How'd you know where we were? I asked a buddy to keep tabs on everything. Trail Date-san and see if maybe anything's changed. Date-san was the key. Surely he'd find a way to get in contact with Kiryu-san. <laughs> Lo and behold, just the other day, I hear old Date's been frequenting a certain bar out in Ijincho. All I had to do was come back to Japan, play my cards right, and poof. Here I am, and there you are. So, with that out of the way, maybe it's time you explained yourself. And just what is it you want me to tell you? Why I had to become a ghost? I'll take anything so long as it's good. You and your pal here are done playing me for a fool. Hey, maybe give it up, Kiryu. I'd rather not get slugged by Akiyama again. I ain't apologizing yet, by the way. I'm still ready to kick you across the street. Hey now, not funny. <laughs> Fine. I'll tell you everything. Looks like you finally won, Akiyama. So that's it, then. That's the story. So what, Kiryu-san? You made a pact with this Daidoji faction to protect Haruka-chan and Haruto-kun? I did. I needed to be dead to the world, and I had to keep silent to make good on my word. Date-san was there when I made that promise. I made him my sole witness. It was my fault he couldn't tell you all this time. You want to blame someone? Blame me. Like I even could after all that. Especially not now that I know you're dying. Sorry. You know, it doesn't matter who I tell. They always start treating me nice. <laughs> oh, brother. And you just had to lay it on me, huh? So what you been up to, Akiyama? You snuck away from Kamarocho without so much as a peep. <laughs> well, as you know, I get smitten pretty easily. Before I knew it, I chased some girl way out the country. Thanks to that, however, I got to take it easy. <laughs> Almost feel guilty now, but with how rough you guys have had it. Yeah, well, I heard you left at a good time. Got out just as the Tojo clan disbanded. Right around then, the governor enacted his Kamarocho 3K plan. Anyone operating even an inch outside the law got shut down. Knowing you, that must have thrown a wrench your way. I'm sure the police came knocking, yeah? Hey, if you knew, you could have at least thrown me a bone, huh? The money I handled mostly comes from gray zones, 
So I had to spread it across the globe to keep it safe. Right, and then you ended up in Singapore. Wait, what? Singapore? Who said anything about that? Huh? Was that wrong? <laughs> wrong as can be. But it's not like I tell you the truth either way. Of <laughs> course not. We had our secrets, and now Akiyama's returning the favor. You wouldn't be that stingy, would you? Sure I would. I'm a moneylender, remember? Let's not forget he still sick the Liumong after us, too. You know, I should file a complaint to Sun He. Tell her boys they ought to check their target next time. Right. <clears throat> anyway. All in all, I get there wasn't much you could do, given the circumstances. But how long have we known each other? We've taken on countless Yakuza and been through the ringer how many times now? If you're wondering whether I was cool with being left out, the answer's no. Didn't you just say you get it? Look, point is, you didn't even ask me for help. No, you went off to carry that weight all by yourself. Buddy, that's just plain lame. Anyhow, I won't go blaming you. On the contrary, I'm gonna help you see things through. Hmm? This might have started off as some Daidoji deal, Kiryu-san. But I'm gonna guess you're in deep again, huh? Fat chance I'll just sit back and ignore that. I appreciate it, but if you get involved, I promise to the Daidoji's as good as empty. Right, the pact you made. And what? You just stick to the shadows the rest of your life? Was there really no other way? There might have been. But things back then were... Let's just say they were pretty dire. Hey, well... I sure have never lived life as a dead man, far as I'm aware. Still... I can only imagine how lonely you feel. You can't see Haruka-chan or Haruto-kun, can you? That's the idea. Hey, now, Kiryu. What'd they tell you earlier? The Daidoji might give you a pass, even to see Haruka. Even if it's just a quick glance. It's great you're keeping your promise, but is it worth it? You don't have much time left. I know. That's why I can't do it. What? So what if I do meet with Haruka now? Before long, I'll just be gone from her life again. They'd have to watch me die a second time. Some good that do. You sure about that? Hmm? Meeting today, seeing you again after so long. It's like whatever I had pent up inside just disappeared. For my money, I can't see myself regretting this one bit. You changed my life, Kiryu-san. I don't know where or who I'd be if not for you. You gave me a chance when I was at rock bottom. Of course, you didn't exactly know it then. Right as I'm giving up, I learn about this guy. Some hard-headed lunatic in the same town, who kept fighting no matter what he was up against. You're more than you realize, Kiryu-san. It wasn't just opportunity. It was more than some chance. You gave me the courage to keep on living. You made a difference. And because of that, I did all I could to find you. You're a special person to me. Believe it or not. And really, I'll bet Haruka-chan feels it even more. Come off it, Akiyama. I'm nothing special, and you know it. You believe that? If I see her again, if I see Haruka, death might actually become scary. Who knows, maybe I'm just a coward. I wouldn't go that far, Kiryu. So the Dragon of Dojima has something he fears after all. <laughs> Feel a lot better about myself, honestly. Great. Always something to say. You really are sharp as a tack. <laughs> An honor coming from you. Well, I'd say that settles it then, Kiryu. Mm. Next time we do this, I'm bringing Haruka in. She might even have Haruto with her. You're not serious. You think I'd say so otherwise? 
Seeing you in a whole new light, Date-san. Let me know if there's anything I can do. A new light, huh? Well, anyway, let's toast. Bury the hatchet, good and deep. Now we're talking. Cheers, fellas. <laughs> yeah, for now. So this is Forshine Tokyo, huh? Never imagined our club would make its way here. To think our tiny little cabaret that nearly went under would come so far. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. You were against expanding to Kanto, weren't you? Nah, I wasn't exactly against it. I just, you know, never found the courage. I was scared of failing and losing everything that we built. That's why I could never bring myself to do it. But Koyuki-chan's amazing. She knew the risks and still pressed forward. No matter the end result, this is a huge first step. Yeah, you're right. Yo, asshole! You really did a number on me last time. Who's he? A friend of yours? Does he look like a friend? A club's turnout on day one shows how it's gonna do in the future, so we figured we'd crash the party. <laughs> Yuki, stand back. What? You gonna stop us, Grandpa? I'd like to see you try. Come on, it's your bedtime. Bring it on. Here we go. Yeah. Ooh, the knockout. Let's finish this! Never mind. All right, then. All done cleaning up the entrance. Let's take a look inside, Yuki. Okay! Hello! I'm sorry, we're not open yet. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! What? Yuki-san? Hey there, Koyuki-chan! I heard you were in a pickle, so I came to help out. Well, if that's okay, that is. Of course that's okay. Why wouldn't it be? But aren't you super busy with your restaurant? Well, about that. I'm not busy at all. I just wanted to look cool in front of you. I'm so, so sorry. Uh, wait. Really? Yeah, really. She had a lot of time on her hands. Ouch. Truth hurts. <laughs> Yuki-san! Whoa there. What's wrong? Nothing. I, I just... I just really, really wanted to see you. I was so lonely without you. Koyuki-chan. I wanted to see you too. You're doing great, you know. <laughs> hey, it's about time to open up shop, isn't it? Don't you need to get ready? Oh, right. Uh, Yuki-san, do you mind lending me a hand? Of Course I don't mind. Wow, after all these years, I can't believe I get to be a hostess again. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am so stoked! Come on, this way, Yuki-san! You just sit tight, Kiryu-san! Alright. Sorry for the wait. <laughs> so, 
What do you think? Beautiful. <laughs> you look stunning, Yuki-san. Ah, with you around, it's like we've got a hundred girls working the floor. But today's the grand opening, right? If only we had another first-rate hostess here to really get things rolling. Hmm, but do we know anyone like that? Hmm, a first-rate hostess, huh? I might know someone. Huh? You do? That's great! Could you please, please, please ask her? Sure. I'll give her a call. I was wondering what's all the hurry, but I never expected you to call me over to a cabaret club. Who's this? A friend of mine, Saiko. She's the mama of her own club back in Yokohama. I'm Koyuki. Oh, sorry for having you come all the way here, Saiko-san. And I'm Yuki. I've known Kiryu-san for pretty much forever. Yuki and... Koyuki? No way. Yuki-san and Koyuki-san, as in the legendary hostesses of Four Shine? Sotenbury's number one cabaret club? Uh, yep, we sure are. Oh my god! Oh, this is incredible. I can't believe I'm meeting actual legends. I have read your cabaret management book over and over, Yuki-san. <laughs> Thank you, that's sweet. Now, when did you get published? Uh... It just happened to happen one day. Man, what was I even thinking? But hearing how someone read it from cover to cover makes me real happy. Um, anyway, today is our grand opening, Psycho-san, but we're a little short-staffed. I'm sorry this is all so last minute, but do you think you could help us out? We'll definitely pay you and all, so... Yes, of course, I'd love to. Oh, this would be such a great learning opportunity. And it's such an honor to work alongside you both. Awesome! Thank you so much. So, do we have enough hostesses? Yes, all thanks to you, Kiryu-san. But we still have one more role to fill. Hmm? What role? Wait, don't tell me. Kiryu-san, just like old times, right? Sure takes me back. Ooh, you look real handsome. <laughs> Sorry, we don't have many guys working today either. I really appreciate you stepping in. Ooh, hold up. You were a manager at Four Shine, Kiryu-san? How'd that happen? When you live as long as I have, you experience all sorts of things. I'm already dressed for the part, so I might as well go all the way. Let's make this a night to remember. <laughs> exactly! It's nearly opening time! Ready, ladies? Forshine Tokyo is open for business! Finally over. That was a great showing, as expected of the Kansai giant Forshine. Great work, everyone. Y'all did amazing out there. Oh, that goes for you too, Kiryu-san. And I really can't thank you enough, Yuki-san, Saiko-san. Thanks to everyone's efforts, we made it through the night. When I took over for Yuki-san, I didn't want people thinking Forshine was done for the moment it changed hands. That's why I kept pushing to expand to Kanto. But in the end, I just exhausted myself. Honestly, I feel awful for dragging you all into my mess. I wish I could have gone about it better. Yuki-san would have done a better job for sure. I'm really sorry for my incompetence. <sighs> Koyuki. What are you saying, Koyuki-chan? You attempted something I never had the courage to do. 
Just that by itself is amazing. I wouldn't have even gone for it. Like, yeah, it's true there are things I can do that you can't right now. But same goes the other way around. There are lots of things you can do that I can't even imagine. So you just keep doing you, Koyuki-chan, and give everything 100%. There's really no need to copy me. Not when you've got plenty going for you. Plus, you've got skill, trust me. So believe in yourself. I want you to shine bright as the star of your own show, all right? Yuki-san. <laughs> Yuki-san! Whoa! <laughs> She's amazing. I think I get why everyone calls her the legendary hostess. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Thank you all so much for today. You've got a handle on things now? Yeah, and I think the harassment will die down thanks to you, Kiryu-san. I'm gonna give it 100% for the sake of my precious foreshine. Come stop by again sometime. You too, Psycho-san. I'd love to. Keep at it, Koyuki-chan. I think I need to step up my game too. Gotta keep my restaurant afloat. By the way, what kind of restaurant are you running, Yuki-san? You never told me. Oh, huh, she didn't? It's a Chirashi sushi place. Huh? But why sushi, of all things? <laughs> oh, you know. You experience all sorts of things when you live as long as I have. Anyway, my business hasn't taken off at all, so I ought to learn from your example and do my best. Well, we can't have your restaurant go under. I'll visit you every day and have chirashi for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. But don't worry about me, all right? Just focus on your club. <laughs> all right. Well, guess this is it then. You ladies take care. Uh, what's up? Since we're all here, why don't we do that thing one last time before we head out? That thing? Oh, <laughs> right. That. Yeah, let's do it! You too, Psycho-san. How about it? That... Oh, that thing from the photo in Yuki-san's book. All right, fine. Might as well sign off with that. Okay, here goes. Let's wish each other all the best in our future endeavors! One... Two... Three... Four time! Say, Kiryu-san, have you heard? There's a legendary underground weapons shop nearby. Legendary, you say? Yeah. Ichiban and I have gotten goods there from time to time. The dealer's this shady guy who won't serve just anyone. You can't even meet him unless you pass a test first. But if Nanchan and I bring you along, I'm sure he'd let you in too. Oh, you're talking about Chao Ka Long. <laughs> Legendary is quite the exaggeration, in my opinion. There is a lot I don't understand, but I'm interested. It's nearby, right? Let's see it then. Okay, you got it. Okay, Kiryu-san, the weapons dealer is usually just down the ladder. All right, let's see what he's got. Did you bring this crowd to me expecting a show? This isn't how we do things in the underworld. I'm not running some tourist attraction here. Fortunately for you, I tagged along. And anyway, the fact that you're in business at all is thanks to me. So if you want to maintain your little sliver of autonomy, I suggest you mind your manners in front of me. <laughs> so says the Queen of Komiju. Very well, then. I'll hold my tongue while you're here, at least. 
But there's still someone I don't recognize. Who's he? He's my guest. That's all you need to know. Don't tell me you're gonna throw a fit about this, too. A guest of Sun He's? And yet, he appears familiar to me. Hey, Sun He. Remind me, what's this guy's name again? Oh, he goes by Chao Ka Long. Chao Ka Long. Chao Ka Long? You ask my name, but won't give one in return. I don't appreciate being slighted like this. He's Tai Chi Suzuki. There. Everything's square now. All right, Chao Sun? Let's see now. Sato is currently the most common surname in Japan. And guess what? Suzuki is right after that. So? What's the problem? It's a fake name, if I've ever heard one. You're practically introducing me to a John Doe. Even so, what does it matter? I'm vouching for Suzuki-san's identity. So, how about you quit the bullshit and bring out your wares like a proper arms dealer? Not happening. What did you say? Hey, you! Show me your face! No, it's fine. I'll just leave. I'm not in the mood for this. Couldn't be. Stop! Nobody move! I know exactly who you are. <laughs> what a change. I barely recognized you. Guess that goes to show. The march of time is relentless. Whatever it is you're going on about, you're clearly mistaken. Oh, really? Well, your identity doesn't matter at this point. I'm not letting you leave. I told you from the start, you've stepped into the underworld. Chao Ka Long. Do you understand what you're about to do? Are you prepared to make me your enemy? On the contrary, Sunny. You're the one disregarding the delicate balance of the underworld. Not only did you bring a stranger before me, now you're trying to slither your way out of a deal. If word got out, who in Ichin Cho's underworld? could bring themselves to trust in the Komichu. I hear you. Fine, what do you want? <laughs> Testing his worth only seems fair. That's always been my standard for any new customers, after all. If I take him on, I'm sure I'll finally feel more familiar with our mysterious friend here. If I'm worthy enough, he'll treat me like a customer, right? And drop the whole identity thing. <sighs> sure. Agree. Are you sure you'll be all right, Suzuki-san? Business negotiations were never my strong suit. Better to let my fists do the talking. If words can't get through to someone, in the end, you just gotta hope that they feel it. <laughs> How funny. We finally agree on something! Let's finish this. I'm not a loser! Let's do it. In for the kill! <laughs> on your knees! Here we go. Get serious. Wanna play? Nothing Maybe. personal. Let's finish this! Hope you're ready. Try this on for size. Well, aren't you a stubborn? <laughs> now we're fine. I'm not what? backing down. Have fun with this. <laughs> Moving up in the world. <laughs> Damn it. 
Looks like I passed. Chow Ka Long. Quit playing dumb. You know who I really am, don't you? What's going on? <laughs> don't deny it. All those years ago, I fought you to the death. My name is Lao. As far as I'm concerned, it's Chow Ka Long. And that's what I intend to call you. This is the underworld, like you said. Pardon me? And my name is Taichi Suzuki. That's all we need to know about each other. You said I'd be a customer if I won. Promises made in the underworld are never made lightly. Especially with the Queen of Komiju as our witness. <laughs> exactly. Now, if you're satisfied, can we please carry on? <sighs> you! What's the meaning of this? You're pretty powerful, I'll admit that. I assume your weapons are of the same caliber. <sighs> Without a doubt. After all, you won't find a better arms dealer than me. Whew. That nearly went south. So, uh, does this mean we're cleared to shop here now? Yes. With my weapons in hand, your strength will be unmatched. In fact, I bet you could even make the dragon of Dojima disappear. <laughs> oh yeah? We'll just see about that. Good grief. Thank goodness that's finally over. Hello? Take care of you, but if you want to hear... All right, then. I'm gonna have you head over to Serena. Serena? You want me back in Kamurocho? Yeah. Akiyama's bringing over a special guest. The very last one I want you to meet. Care to hazard a guess? You don't mean Haruka, do you? And Haruto, too. They came all the way from Okinawa. I haven't told them you're still alive or anything, but... I'm sure they'd be thrilled to see you. More so than vice versa, I'd say. Date-san, how long have you been planning this? Huh? Was this your plan all along? To bring me back into Haruka's life? No matter how nice that sounds, I'd be breaking my agreement with the Daidoji. Well, you can worry about them later. Right now, just get a move on to Serena. This might be your last chance to see her. Better to regret having gone than never going at all. Got it? Now I suggest you hurry. This might be your last chance to see her. Better to regret having gone than never going at all. Got it? Now I suggest you hurry. What would I do if I saw Uncle Kaz again? Sorry, but what kind of question is that? Do you know something, Akiyama-san? I thought we were here for a get-together with Date-san. Sorry, that was just a hypothetical. But I've told you before, haven't I? How I don't buy that Kiryu-san's actually dead. So if the man were still around, well, I bet he'd pop up out of nowhere on a day like this. 
Especially with you and Haruto-kun here in Kamurocho of all places. Wait, you're saying he's coming? Uncle Kaz? I am. At least, hypothetically. <laughs> and now we're back to my original question. If Uncle Kaz really did show up, I'd be really happy to see him alive and well. And in the same breath, I feel like I'd realize how weak we are on our own. Huh? It's been years since everyone at Morning Glory and I heard that Uncle Kaz died. Regardless of whether he's alive or in heaven, always supported each other so we could meet him with our heads held high. <sighs> Some of the kids are already all grown up and make enough money to get by on their own. We all admired Uncle Kaz's strength, and when the going got tough, we'd grit our teeth and push through it. So, it wouldn't be right for me to say that I want to see him again, no matter how badly. Because I don't know if I'll ever be ready to face him. I get it, Haruka-chan. You've gotten so strong, Haruka. Like mother, like daughter. <laughs> Isn't that right, Yumi? You with the Daidoji? We've been keeping an eye on you, you know. Hanawa may be dead, but we are certainly not. Had we not pitied you, we never would have loosened the grip on your leash. It seems we've given you the impression you had the freedom to do whatever you wish. What are you getting at? Let's talk about your detective friend, Dante. There are consequences for breaking an agreement. He fails to comprehend that simple of a concept. I must say, it's gotten out of hand. So could you just keep him in line? Then we'll let bygones be bygones. What did you do to him? Follow us if you care to find out. Son. Hey, you okay? What happened? Because you swore to abandon the name Kazuma Kiryu, the Daidoji faction would pose no threat to you or those around you. Detective Dante himself witnessed the exchange. He was very much aware of the consequences. Hey! Kiryu! What is it, Date son? No high? Had to go. And then you made Haruka. <sighs> if Kiryu san had met her, you wouldn't have gotten off this easy. Consider yourself lucky. Because right about now, your lungs would be heavy with the water of Tokyo Bay. Wait. You didn't see her? Why? She can stand on her own two feet now, and that's good enough for me. I don't have the right to interfere with her life. And I never would have known that without your help. I'm in your debt. Words can't describe how much. Cure you. For now, let me start by taking care of them. Why don't we all just settle down? You're the ones who broke off the agreement. You only have yourselves to blame. We also heard from Date-san. You're running out of time. He begged us to let you go, let you run free at the end of your life. Said you'd only be saying your farewells to a loved one. <sighs> Hilarious, isn't it? You are no longer Kazuma Kiryu. That man is long gone. That was your side of the agreement. Now I want to hear this from your mouth. Kazuma Kiryu is dead. You swore it once. Now swear it again! 
Seems like you'll bend any which way to please the faction. I almost feel sorry for you. Care to elaborate? I went to Hawaii for a mission from the Daidoji, one I've yet to complete. Which means, you don't have permission to kill me. And the only way you'll stop me is over my dead body. Hey! <laughs> that was your last chance to pull the trigger. But because the faction won't allow it, you hesitated. Now you'll suffer all the pain my friend endured, and then some. That's why I said I almost felt sorry for you. I'd back off if I were you. Because you just made a terrible mistake. You're finished, Kiryu! I'm ready. It's my turn. Here we go. Ready for the knockout. Let's finish this! Try and stop me. Hey, here's a follow-up. Now Wanna play? Have fun with this. Let's do it. You still with me, Date-san? <laughs> yeah. Can't go out before the guy who's always ready to die. <sighs> Sorry. It's my fault you were dragged into this mess. I should have known this would happen, but I went ahead and tried to see Haruka anyway. If I'd held up my end of the bargain, it wouldn't have come to this. But in the end, you had to pay for it. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm only doing this because I want to. Stay back. If you kill me, know that you'll never get away with it. Relax. I'm not gonna kill you. After all, the fault lies with me. Your only mistake was forcing him to pay my dues. If you hadn't done that, I wouldn't have cared what happens to me. Do you think that excuse is what you've done? No. But even if I got on my knees and begged, there's nothing left for me to lose. All I can do now is renew our agreement. <laughs> I will never try to meet Haruka or any of my friends again, nor try contacting them. And once this business with the Seiryu clan and Palikana is settled, I swear not to get involved with Kasuga and his friends again. <sighs> right. That includes Date-san, too. Kiryu! If you ever cross the Daidoji again, Makoto Date will be the first to go. And don't you forget it. That's all we had to say. Man, why'd I get stuck with this shitty job? No kidding. Talk about bad luck. I'll take you somewhere to get treated, but after that, we're done. Ugh. thought I'd get roughed up at this age. Seriously. Maybe next time try not to put yourself in danger, Date-san. Well, it would have been worth it if you'd got to say goodbye to Haruka. Don't worry about it. I'm actually feeling pretty good, all things considered. When you're raising kids, there'll be a day you have to set them loose. Haruka and the kids at Morning Glory... ...have all grown up strong. There's nothing else I can teach them, and it's better for me to disappear before they figure that out themselves. It's about time I do, for good. After all, I was meant to die back in Hiroshima, 
and reminds me. Hmm? I got in touch with Haruka and Akiyama earlier. Told him I'd be late because I got in a car accident. An accident, huh? Well, with those injuries, I guess no other excuse would fly. Boy, were they surprised. Especially Akiyama. Once he realized you wouldn't make it, that guy's definitely gonna grill me later. Mind telling him I'm sorry? Pretty sure he'd rather hear that from you. He's gonna start moping again, you know. Yeah. I can definitely see that. I should get going. All right. Hey, you said you were feeling pretty good, right? You saying you have no more regrets in life? Because that's not what this whole thing was about. I don't care what the hell you're sick with. You've given up too much of yourself to it. It's like you're not afraid of dying. And given up before you see where the chips fall? That's not the cure you I know. What happened to the dragon of Dojima? The man who'd keep fighting even if it's a losing battle. What are the odds of you fighting that illness and winning? Gotta be higher than zero. Yeah, must be. For the past few days, I've met with a bunch of folks who knew the old you. They all remember you as a fighter. Whenever the going gets tough, your memory helps them push through. I'm sure one day they'll find themselves in front of a steep hill, feet rooted to the ground. But if they heard that Kazuma Kiryu dared to fight death itself, now that'd give them the courage to even move mountains. That's the sort of inspiration you instill in the people around you. And that's not all. You give everyone the strength to press forward. So wouldn't it make sense to keep fighting to the very end? I'm... Not as strong as you think I am. You're giving me too much credit here. Yeah, I'm not buying that. I've stuck by you for a damn long time now. If you were some random, ordinary guy, maybe I would have given up and let you waste away. But there's no way I can just give up on you. After all, you're... You're the best friend I've ever had. Thank you. Everything you just said. Everything you've done for me up till today. Thank you. For all of it. It's true. I could struggle harder, longer. Maybe it'd buy me a little more time. But I'd spend the rest of my life as someone else. Is that really something worth fighting for? The only way to find out is to live. In this world, you never know what might happen. As long as you don't give up, Kazuma Kiryu can find his way back to us. It all depends on if you will it. I hope that one day I'll see things your way. I really do. <sighs> Guess that's enough of that for now. You still have some unfinished business, don't you? Huh? Like helping Ichiban Kasuga. That guy's quite a handful, too. You're right. Goodbye, Date-san. Stay safe. Yeah. Goodbye, Kazuma Kiryu. So long, old friend. <laughs>